All right, so I actually have something uh, that I've kind of thought about ahead of time for the cold open. It's not just us rambling. Wait, wait, you prepared this? Yeah, I actually prepared this. Oh, oh like, like, like a wizard does. Hey, there we go. Hey. All right, so obviously we're doing a wizards episode. Nobody's surprised by that. You clicked on the freaking episode. Here we are. And I'm thinking a lot about the spell casting. Now, when you're a wizard, you can cast a certain number of spells that you've prepared per day, which is your intelligence modifier plus your wizard level, I believe. Yeah, something like that. So, um, but you can only know up to five cantrips. And it says that um, cantrips are fixed in your mind. That's right under the spell book um, uh, paragraph that they have in the player's handbook that... They're, the cantrips are fixed in your mind. They're not from your spell book, so you're not memorizing them. You can only have up to five. So what happens when you get another wizard spell book or you learn another cantrip? If you can only have, let's say, three cantrips because you're level three, and you're still level three, you haven't gotten to level four yet, but you pick up the ability to cast Firebolt. Do you now know four cantrips? And do they still act as cantrips because it's not written in your spell book? Can you just have a wizard with 25 cantrips able to just shoot, 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 shoot every single round? No, because that's called a warlock. No, but seriously, is there anything limiting that in this game? Um, I think it's a bit of a gray area. The way I would do it is I would definitely have cantrips be something you could put in your spell book. I know it says that they're not and that they're stuck in your mind because the implication is if you don't have your spell book for whatever reason, you still have your cantrips you could rest on. And I get that. I'm with that. I understand that. I would have that still be a thing. But you're your nerd's nerd. You're going to have that basic, okay, well, if I need to just make sure I have clean clothes today, I could at least make sure I have clean clothes every day. With That is sale. a problem with nerds more often than I'd like. But yes. I, I've ever been to a con? It's still a problem. Yeah. Um, but... But no, but my, my my question still stands. Like, I hear what you're saying, and if you get more cantrips, why can't I have eight? I think, well, I was just about to say, probably depends on the, the capacity of how well you can remember them, but if you're a, a wizard with an 18 int... Which you are. Yeah, exactly. You probably can. I would say, because it's so situational that I would probably just allow my wizards to remember as many cantrips as they want. My problem, I'm with you, my problem with that is it's going to get out of hand by about level 8. Mm. I'm fine, you're level 19 and you know 25 cantrips, sure, I don't give a shit. You're level 8 and you know 12, and you're just, you know what, I'm going to press a digitation in this round, I'm going to firebolt that round. You know what, I want some acid splash right now. Right? You're doing too much. You're, you're a Swiss army knife. But you're not like a jack of all trades. You are a master of all. I would have it as so if you yeah, have three that you're supposed to know. So how many? Five that you're supposed to know? Uh, yeah, eventually. Max five. Well, right max up five. Yeah, the three. Okay, give me your five that you definitely know for sure. Inside out, you could do it backwards in Latin. And then everything else, I'll make you roll an intelligence. That actually check. is how you cast spells. You just say them backwards in Latin. <laughs> That's how you yeah. do it? Okay. Um, everything else, give me an intelligence check to see how well you perform it. Or see if you fuck it up. Yeah, or or, if you just can't or maybe here your five and your other ones don't get the intelligence modifier to the spell save DC yeah. or the spell attack bonus. Yeah, or you don't get your proficiency or you don't get something. No, like that would still that's still too powerful. In my but mind. Every I day, would I would I would say if you have, sorry, I would scrap cantrips known and just make it cantrips per day. And then when you're preparing your spells in the morning, these are the three cantrips from your selection of cantrips that you are preparing every day. And you get to choose. Sure, you could be a Swiss, Ar a Swiss Army knife, and it actually kind of enhances you as a wizard to be a, that. I like that bit. idea. I like. I that would idea. just still have if you're a level five. Um, if you're a level five wizard, you it, have your four cantrips. Four you may day. have eight in your book, but for that you have day, four. you have those but four. It's, it's it's weird that they differentiate it in in the player's handbook. It's designed to be purposefully different, and yet our solution is to just treat them like spells. Yeah. Right? Like, it's... Uh, what was the reasoning behind this? And isn't this a big oversight? The fact that you can't learn more cantrips? Or... Is that what they're saying? Once you know your five, you can... Once you have learned them, you never get to know another one. Well, that doesn't make well, sense to me. Because if a wizard can learn time stop, why can't they learn fucking prestidigitation or something? Exactly. I think it was an oversight. Because in recent, recent UA, they have given the ability to change cantrips. 
Have they? Yes, it is well, a I mean, wizard. It's, only UA, it's but... a wizard. It's a cleric. It's a druid. It's a sorcerer. It's, it's a warlock. Bard. Um, I think it's a bard one as well. Any full caster gets the ability to change their cantrips per long rest. Okay, or well, whatever okay, is. Then, then that's fine. But I don't know. It made me. It made me kind of twitch reading this. That I'm like, hey, you know what? Because I was thinking about spell books, what I would do in the future with them, and so on and so mm-hmm. forth. And I'm sitting there looking at them, going, uh, I, I, I love handing out cantrips. Terry, you okay? You didn't fall out of your fucking chair. You know what the problem was? Is you two, your chairs are very high, and I felt inferior, and I was trying to make mine higher, because I, I couldn't have We do it. this to you on purpose. I, have a, so I actually know. have a, a pretty, you might know, they have an inferiority complex. <laughs> we love oh, you anyway. So. Oh, Terry, it's not that complex. One day, you two are going to realize that I'm not actually not that very good at podcasting, and I won't be invited back. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's that's kind of what I was wondering. Uh, there will be people out there to be like, hey... I learned a new cantrip, or DMs are like, hey, you find a scroll with a new cantrip. That's really powerful if you're just letting them get more and more and yeah. more can- cantrips. It's going to get out of hand very quickly. I, I made the mistake in one of the groups that I ran where I was, I we were brand new to fifth. I wasn't quite clear on this, and I was just like, oh, yeah, this spell book is just the cantrip spell book. It has all of the wizard cantrips go. Oh my god, yeah, I mean... And I all of a sudden this guy's walking around molding earth and shaping water and... Mm-hmm. and yeah, it's... Well, I mean, I don't... Are those cantrips? Yeah. Jeebus. All right, well... Well, we are going to talk about this and more in Well, we didn't come to a conclusion with that, but yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, we are going to talk about this and, t- uh, and more today as we delve into uh, the 5th edition Wizard. Welcome to It's a Mimic with your DMs, Adam, Dan, and Terry. Welcome to another episode of the It's a Mimic podcast, the roundtable Dudges and Dragons discussion, where you never know what you're going to get. Dan's going to be the only one that's good at this opening by like the end of the yeah, year, because he's gonna he, mess all me. of your DMing is at the very end. I, I have like six in a row. I think you are throwing one in there just for flavor. I like, DM once every four months, and so I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am Dan, and with me are Adam and Terry, and today we're talking about Wizards. Okay. I figure we we're gonna be mis- mispronouncing a lot of things, so I'll just get. So we start off with. The I'll first, just break the glass early. The class, yeah. Wizards. Okay. Yeah. So uh, as with all of our class specials, we're just gonna do a brief overview of the general class mechanics and their flavor and and all that other stuff um, before we dive into the subclasses or the the paths or or what they are. However, I do want to mention one thing: like sorcerers, like clerics. You don't get this really at third level. You don't get your arcane traditions that early, or sorry, that late. You get them at second level. Um, so when you're doing your... That's true for Barbarian too, isn't it? Uh, no, Barbarian path is third level. Uh, Warlock choose their patron at second, I think. Right? See how much Warlocks much choose their patron at first level, oh, but course, they choose do. their friggin' pact at third level. <laughs> Oh, there's so many little terms here. So, like, Barbarian Paths are third level. Bard Colleges are, are third level. Ranger Conclaves. I'm still holding on to this. Holding on to Conclave? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't... I'm like, they're Druid Whatever's going to happen. Dan, you're going to have to help me read today. I'm going to tell the internet what's they're going Druid on. They're Druid Circles, you heathen. Druid Circles, that's right. Oh, yeah, then Ranger Conclaves. 100% I'm with you. Yeah. yeah. Um, just for the people at home, Dan's helping me read tonight because one of my contact lenses is, is my left eye is uh, currently sat on the back of my eyeball. Terry tried to open his third eye, forced it too hard, <laughs> so and just... I, it was bothering me a bit. I had a dry eye, so I kept rubbing it and rubbing it and rubbing it, and then everybody who wears contact lenses knows the feeling. I didn't hear what you said, so I'm moving on. And now it's sitting on the back of my eyeball. What did he say? What did no, say, but you dick? said you're sitting there rubbing your dr- your dry eye, and I'm well, like, well, look, whatever. Jesus, Terry, fuck. Just letting them know at home. If I say anything stupid tonight, that's the reason. All right. So, the wizard. These are one of the classic classes that have been prevalent in Dungeons and Dragons from the get go. They are your long bearded, uh, scholarly. Uh, they're Gandalfs. They're Gandalfs. They're uh, uh, Dumbledore. They're. Um, well, Dumbledore was a sorcerer, but keep going. He was? You have to innately have the the wizard genes in order to cast spells. Oh, yeah, but oh, they go to a, but they go to a school to learn more. Yeah, and if they don't but learn they're more, all sorcerers. Yeah, they're innately magical. They're innately magical creatures. Oh, then I would say that they're wizards with the. Uh, they're multi-class. They yeah. were sorcerers and multi-classed into wizards. Yeah, that makes sense. Ah, I don't know. I think I agree with you, Adam, one hundred percent. I think they're they're sorcerers that are just learning to uh, hone their magic. Yeah, well, that makes sense because they would have different. Uh, Special uh, specialities. 
Mm. Specialties. 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 Little sure. Sean Connery. Go anyway. Slytherin. So uh, your wizards are going to be your lore monkeys. They're going to be the ones who are very interested in Your the... bards are your lore monkeys. In a w- Well, yeah, but so are your wizards. Your wizards actually get all of the knowledges. Then again, so do bards. Um, um, but your, your wizards are built towards knowing them because all of your quote-unquote knowledges, which are your arcana, your history, your nature, your religion, they are... All in skills. So your your wizard right out the gate is going to be better at them than your bard is. These are your guys that uh, are all about their books and to they the don't, point they where don't get nature. What the shit? They're good nature. History, insight, investigation. Huh, I was wrong. Do I do that again? No. All right. I'm going to leave that in. I feel like they should get nature. I feel like they should get nature too. They're book nerds. Anyways, they're all about their books, and that's. Put in them mechanically with their spell books. So what we're going to do real quick is we're going to break down the general class features of the wizard. And from there we will talk about our traditions and we'll move on through there. So right out the gate, you have a d6 hit points. Uh, your wizards are... Squishy. Squishy. Um, they're right up there with your sorcerers and your... Um, I guess that's it. It's just... Just the two of them. Just wizards yeah. and sorcerers. <coughs> I remember when they were D4s, and that was super rough. Oh, rough. Yeah. Um, their proficiencies, they are proficient in none armor. None armor. Yeah. None armor. Um, they that, have... That's called a habit? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, they have daggers, darts, slings, quarterstaffs, and light crossbows. Um, this is useful, and I would recommend, your as I did with the Sorcerer's episode, pay attention to the fact that you get light crossbows, wizards. You could still shoot a light crossbow. It's still a thing you could do. Everyone should be carrying a dagger all of the time. Anyway. And a light crossbow. And a light crossbow. There's no reason why not. Yeah. Surely just have a dagger on your belt. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. Even if you don't have a proficiency, even if you have a negative proficiency to it. Yeah. Roll the dice. You're, otherwise, you're just sitting there. The thing is, daggers are also one of the more uh, practical weapons in the game in terms of outside of combat uses. I have. Yeah. I would like to raise issue with this. With these weapon choices here. And I know we don't often do this. I don't see why, it, it, according to the book here, it makes more sense for a wizard to be proficient in darts and slings over something like a short sword. Where, like, I don't think they're going to be an expert in anything, but I feel like they would have been around short swords more. Or they um, could get to grip no, them easier because, than No, because in their weird arcane university, they play lawn darts a lot. So they have, you know, lawn Fair darts. Fair Bloody good game, though, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, um, and they're all British. All wizards are all, British. All wizards are British. Yeah. That's true, um, actually. And Except for the evil ones, which are Russian. <laughs> yeah. Or the weird, really mentally yeah. broken ones that I'm are thinking, oddly German. I'm just thinking of all the wizards I know from pop culture, and they are all British. You're yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Um, slings, I don't get. I think it's because they're a very simple weapon, and that's the reason why they get them. They get simple weapons. That's what it is. Although it's weird that they don't get clubs. This is bullshit, because I would we like to see... We mentioned that in Sorcerers as well. I would like to see... A pajama-wearing wizard who's never done a push-up in his life be proficient in a sling when I know for a fact they can't throw a ball. <laughs> well, they got a D6 hit point. Chances are good that they've got an arm in the sling, so they're... <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're proficient. They're proficient. No, no, it's, it's, they it's the leather strap that they use to carry their books. No, no, no. no. <laughs> their arms in a sling because they cast. Oh, so, oh nice, hey. nicely done. Uh. <laughs> All right, what else are we doing? Help me. Uh, saving throws are int and wisdom? Yeah, no, that. what are you going to give them, charisma? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can't talk to girls. Nerds. They can't talk to girls. Well, this is... This tools, is none. This is not a technical qualification. Oh, yeah, that, I'm, I'm just moving on. They, they have they have proficiency in none tools, um, which also feels weird to me. They're the, they're the nerds. Why? They should have some sort of... Dan technical... wants them to have alchemy. That's what Dan wants. Alchemy or uh, herbalism or something along those lines. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Uh, Wisdom, it seems to me that they did this uh, thing where they, instead of choosing, okay, we need them to be good in int, what's the other thing they're good in? They're like, okay, what's the thing that they're least bad in? Give them that one. I am well, going to... Yeah, that gonna, makes perfect sense to me. I'm going to pose another argument. I do not believe that the nerdiest of nerd nerds are proficient in wisdom. You, We've been around nerds a lot. Have you ever seen them out in the real world? Yes, they are academically, typically very intelligent. Have you ever seen a nerd trying to handle themselves in the real world? I look in the mirror daily. Yes. <laughs> okay. oh, no, 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 but it's not legit wisdom. It's wisdom based on what their skills are. So I'm thinking it's perception, sure, animal handling, 
right? Like they they sit there and they pet their cat and they don't leave their basement, right? They mm-hmm. they look around for the next tome in the in the library. Yeah. Like I, I can I can see wisdom. Oh, I, to, I can I can understand that. They're not good at, at insight. Would would finding a except uh, actually they are of good a, at insight. Apparently. Would would uh, finding the spine of a tome be investigation or perception? Well, the spine is always on the same part of the book, Dan. <laughs> well, I know, but if you're looking through a bookshelf for a specific book, are you making your depends own how far away you are. Yeah, it, it depends how far away you are. <coughs> if you're across the room looking for the blue binding, there, yeah, okay. that's perception. perception. If you're trying is... to read them and be, okay, where's where's volume seventy three yeah. in this? Then that's investigation. Perception is there are twelve books in this room. Investigation is one of them is Moby Dick. That's the way. That's it's fair enough. Moby Richard in Britain. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so straight away at uh, they also get a standard equipment pouch. Uh, this is our uh, set. This is you get a quarter staff or a dagger. Um, you missed their skills. So next is their skills, uh, which they could choose two, any two from um, history, arcana, investigation, insight, religion, or medicine. You guys said it's weird that there's not nature. It's in weird there. that there's no nature. I think it's weird there's no nature. Um, it's weird that there's no... No, I, I think everything else tracks. I mean, what are you going to give macrobats? I don't see why... Uh, I guess from studying history and things, religion, maybe. Uh, but I don't see why religion over nature. I do, because religion also implies to undead and the planes. Um, well, Arcana is also planes. There's that weird, like, in-between. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I get why religion, because religion also it applies to... It's not just the, the deific powers. It's also the hells. It's the... Right. It's Yeah, you're right. An understanding of the planes. Right. Stuff. That makes sense. You have convinced me, Dan. But what else do we give them? I, I uh, other skills you mean? Yeah. Ah. Like which ones feel missing? Uh, I could I could probably make an argument for sleight of hand depending on their forgery or their writing abilities. Mm. I, I, I could, but I mean, uh, insight. I actually, I insight's actually, on there. It is. Oh, I sorry, eyes. To, internet. I kind of wanted to bring this up as a thing. Most of the spell schools should give. An additional skill proficiency. You think so? Yes. Well, no, you're going to get some when you do your background. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. So you're going to have at least, what, four? Mm-hmm. So, no, I'm good with that. A, a wizard shouldn't be as skilled out in the real world doing things at a dungeon crawl. They should be leaning on the barbarian or even the bard or the... Because these are people that are out in the world doing shit. Yeah, the, right. bard, the, the bard, the rogue, and the ranger are the ones that are going to... I would even argue... the barbarian, the fighter, and the paladin is going to be like, okay, look, l- listen, read your book, sit there, shut up, don't do anything, try not to bleed, I'm going to put the tent up. <laughs> I would argue deception as well. Reason being, I am many, smarter than you. Yeah, how many how many evil wizards are there? Right? Yeah, like, all of them. Not all of them. Most of them. All of them. Untold cosmic power. It's going to corrupt. Isn't that just a genie? I mean, look what it did to Jafar. Itty bitty living space. Yeah. Jafar anyway, was a <coughs> what's uh, next? No, on this he was rambling episode. Wizard. No, he wished to be a sorcerer. Second wish. Read the watch the movie. Oh yeah, no, he, you're definitely right. Boom. But everything was through his staff. Uh, was focus. Aladdin a warlock? Ooh. Rogue who multiclassed into warlock? Is that where we're going with this? Maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, the power wasn't his to keep. Yeah, uh, Neither is it for a warlock, my dude. No, it was just... <laughs> the warlock patron could no, be like, just you've been a dick, you now have no powers okay, if you make any a, point. If you, if you make a wish with a djinn, are you a warlock? If you make a wish with a nefriti, yes. If you make a wish with a djinn, maybe no. No, if but you... Probably. S- I could make an argument either way. I could make it that if you wanted to have a, any one of the jinn as your patron, yeah, I get behind that. However, if you are just if you if you are just walking through the forest and you come across a jinn, and you're like, "Hey, bitch, give me a wish," then you didn't take a level of warlock. What does the genie call Aladdin? A friend, master, and that's why he's not a warlock. Is the genie not? No, I'm not going. <laughs> the genie a warlock. <laughs> Um, so, um, spellcasting, uh, right away at first level is you're going to be your first main class feature. Um, you use intelligence as your main spellcasting stat. This 
makes sense tracks and has been this way since forever. We already uh, talked about cantrips before the opening, so... <clears throat> already talked about cantrips before the opening. However, the one note I do want to make is, remember, sorcerers get way more cantrips than you. Spellbook at first level, you start off with your spellbook, uh, and you start off with six first level spells of your choice. Now as you level, you get to add two more. Was it two more per... Yeah, no, you get to add two more every time you level to your spellbook. Right away out the gate for free. However, you can find spellbooks out in the wild and add spells to your spellbook for 50 gold per spell level. Where does that gold and, go? And, and two hours. Uh, you're using, so the idea is that you don't know what you're doing when you, when you read somebody else's notes, mm. you're deciphering it in, in your own way. And so you're using up spell components trying to do it the way. When okay. they, when they say, oh, there's like three pound, uh, like shorthand, three pound diamond. Does that diamond dust? Is that mm-hmm. that's a three pound diamond? Is it? Are you pounding on a diamond three times? Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you doing? You're gonna waste diamonds by while diamonds. you're trying to get it yeah, right. right. It's trial so, and error a little bit. So that's what that is. It, that's why it also takes two hours per level as well as the fifty gold pieces yeah. because you're dicking around with this. So you and don't this immediately is, know it. And this is per spell level, which means your wizards are constantly going to be sl- slowly siphoning off money. And I feel this gets ignored at tables quite a lot because you're putting a ninth level spell in your spell book. You're spending 450 gold and 18 hours. Yeah. You're also level 18 or 17 or whatever. And so like 450 gold isn't much by then. Yeah. I, this is actually something I want to touch on. We'll touch on it more when it's, when it's the right time in the podcast. But all of that background stuff that gets ignored too much with regards to gold and time it takes for spells and, and all that yeah. stuff. And no class is more guilty of a lot of that stuff falling under the uh, edges. Than the wizard. And like some of the components and stuff as well being missed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, that's important. Um, you, of course, you have ritual casting as a wizard, um, which means as long as the spell is in your book and you ha- and it has a ritual tag, you can cast that spell for 10 minutes plus its casting time um, without expending a spell slot. Nice. You still have to spend the material components if it's there, but not the spell, uh, not the spell slot itself. Um, you get an arcane focus right out the gate as well. This tracks with everything else. I mean, it's... Every, everything's got a uh, holy symbol and arcane focus. You're a spellcaster, yeah. right? I mean, sure. Yep. Why, why the fuck not? Mm-hmm. Next along the board is the thing that keeps you kind of up and going with the rest of everyone else for the entire... I got a question. Hold on, because we ran by it really quickly, okay? The idea that you just for free add these spells. How do you justify that in-game? Um... You just had an epiphany? Is that it? I just suddenly know how to cast magic out of my hand and light that shit over there on fire. Oh, you mean as you level up and you get access yeah, to more spells? Yeah, when you level spells. up and you get access to more spells. How do you justify that just being like, I'm suddenly more powerful? I Like, for a sorcerer, it's a gimme. You yeah. Know, and it happens. I'm very for a big... warlock, it's like the patron comes down and it's like, hey, learn this now. Right? But what does a... Uh, yeah, what, and I'm very big get? on narrative right in a game I I don't like it when things don't marry up it doesn't make sense I don't like the idea of you just waking up and knowing fireball um, uh, I don't know I would I would for me being the DM knowing that maybe at the end of this session that these players are going to be leveling I would prepare something in the narrative that means that that wizard has accessed that spell somehow so, well assuming you know what the spell is going to be because I mean when I DM I say hey at the end of the session you guys all have this long rest now go away level I'll see you next next session yeah and so there's occasionally a question of hey can i take this spell does it make sense in your world but for the most part no people are just they're just playing yeah the way i kind of justify it is you are as second level you're choosing your arcane tradition which is putting you in the school that you favor right what that means is when you're choosing your spells you're going to kind of favor that direction which means your character narratively their mindset is set towards either abjuration divination evocation whatever it is Right, right, but you can choose any spell on the wizard's I know you list. can choose any spell on the wizard's spell list to put it in there. I think there would have to be uh, narrative reasons for your characters to choose certain spells. Like, if you're doing a heavy uh, giant campaign, there's probably not going to be a whole hell of a lot of reason for you to choose uh, protection from good and evil or something like that. Yeah, look, I hear what you're saying, but still, people are going to do it the way that that they've always done it and just like, I like that one that's neat. I've always chosen scrying. 
Why would I not get scrying? Well, because you've never... Nothing else in your spells is divination. How can you just all of a sudden one day can just poop out scrying? What about uh, uh, spells that they've already seen or that they've had some sort of limited access to? Well, now me as a DM has got to expose the party, yeah, specifically yeah. one character, to every wizard spell before they get to it. Does it have to be every wizard spell? Is that just in the spirit of fair play? That we can, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I... We we briefly discussed this before with other spellcasting classes in the past and other episodes, but I think having some sort of idea of as your character's leveling, you are getting more powerful, you are the book nerd. So you are just creating these spells your own. As you level, your general experience, your um ability so- as a spellcaster has developed to the point where you are writing the spell in your own way. And it has the spell effect that you of find fireball, out. but it's I, your own unique. <laughs> yeah, your but it's your own, your, your own unique way. I mean, you still have to grab the tallow because you know you need the, the the tallow or the or the guano or whatever it is to cast it. Yeah, I would but. do it. I hear what you're saying, Dan. So I would do it as um, it's almost like a wizard being like a chef. Like they understand flavors the same precisely as, yeah. as, as wizards understand how to you know manipulate the arcane. So it's like okay, you took your knowledge that you you knew from burning hands, and you know that if you add back guano to that, you can concentrate it into a beam. Because that's what just happens, and that's what bat guano can do. Same as lemon affects the flavor of fish, um, and you kind of learn to manipulate it. How does guano affect the flavor? Never mind. Anyway, so... <laughs> Not uh, well. No, I, I like that. This gives... Okay, so while when you have your downtime, it's your long rest, even if it's your short rest, and the fighter is sharpening his blade, and the rogue is, is flip, flipping daggers up and catching them, yeah. right? And the bard is singing a little song for people. The wizard sits there and reads a book. Yeah. But I don't think that's what they're doing. I think they're just sitting there with an old tome going, man, shit, I know, I know they got a tiny hut somehow. Yeah. Liaman did it somehow. Yeah. And it says here that I use something like this. And and they're always trying to do something. And so there's just these little like puffs of smoke. Yeah. Or the the tiny hut turned into a tiny carriage. Oh, I can imagine it as um, almost because it'd be along this sort of uh, lines. It's like Russell Crowe in a Beautiful Mind, where he just goes waffling off and like writing on the blackboard. Yeah. Or something. No, they, I, I it agree makes perfect that. sense in his head. Nobody else knows what he's talking about, but he's going, "No, this makes perfect sense if we do this." And then, or he has an epiphany of when the the rogue threw the dagger up or whatever and caught it. It like flipped his mind, and he's like, "Mage oh, hand, that's mage, what that is." If right? I turn it upside down, you're <laughs> Genius! It goes off his but I think that there's a lot more flavor that we can do with our wizards in our downtime yep. to kind of support the idea of sudden epiphanies. And it keeps everybody magic. immersed in the world as well. It keeps yeah. that narrative, and it, it's that's character development. And, and it's so much fun when you get to be a diviner and your eyes just go white as you're like, uh, 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 tomorrow is um, uh, yeah, right. Or you're a necromancer and you're just like licking a skull or like whatever weird thing that you're doing because wizards have got to be a little bit weird. Yeah, right? and this you guys are flooding me with ideas now and interesting encounters because you mentioned diviners with their eyes going white. I love the idea of. When this is, say, happening for the first time or something important, whether it be the Diviner's eyes going white or the wizard the first time they do a spell when they practice a spell, cannot break concentration on the spell. Yeah. They, they, they're just engulfed by it and they're holding it. And they say the camp's being attacked or something. That person's out of commission right now because they're going to get a new spell at the end of it, but they're just sucked in. Okay, quick sidebar. Beholder, Diviner. All 11 eyes go white. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I just think fun NPC, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I just an absolute like dreadnought divines and the one giant eye. Oh, like, just like a celestial beholder, and they yeah. just he's just like, what? What did you expect? <laughs> yeah, or or ten of them, including the big one, goes, but there's that one that stays normal and is just watching around and just me- keeping track of the rest of the party. We know how to sidebar. Yeah. Anyways, at uh, first level, because we're still talking about first level features here. <laughs> Sorry. You also still get arcane recovery. This keeps you kind of up to date with everyone else, and it's you gaining the ability to uh, regain expended spell slots equal to half um, your wizard level. Once per day on a short or rest. Once per day is a short rest. Once per day, guys. Once a day. So, like, if you are doing that really brutal dungeon crawl and, you know, we have. The, the monk is sitting there going, look, guys, I need a short rest. Just give me another short rest. And everyone else is like, yeah, okay, cool, we can do it. You don't get spell slots the second time. It's once a day. What you have to do is you have to make sure you're using this to its fullest potential every short rest yes. that you can, right? If you are if you are taking it too early, you're shooting yourself in the foot. And this is 
And this is one of the most key abilities for a wizard because wizards are known to just blow through their spells and then be useless. They're relying on cantrips. <laughs> this, this is this is why we made a big point of the light crossbow earlier. Yeah, because that is the thing that happens. This is why I can't be a wizard as well <laughs> because I will right. do that. Um, and and wizards are more about conservation of power than necessarily full unleashing of power. Well, it depends on your wizard. I think you're. Your um, evoker is unleashing the power. Yeah, yeah that's they're not your illusion like, uh, as well. They're not paying attention to like proportionality or necessary force. They're just going to wall. I want that shit over there to blow up. <laughs> 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 they're Sid of Toy Story. Yeah. 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 At second level, you get your arcane tradition. This is the school of magic to which you are specialized in. Um, these all focus, for the most part, the individual schools of magic that exist. Um, with a couple added little features inside of Xanathar's. Uh, so right off the bat, your schools of magic are going to be Abjuration, Conjuration, Divination, Enchantment, Evocation, Illusion, Necromancy, and Transmutation, as well as War Magic from Xanathar's and Blade Singing. Cool. Yeah. And um, astrology. So, so <laughs> no, that's Divination. Oh, so, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, uh, that's a ton. And we're going to go through them all over a handful of episodes yeah. as we circle back to Wizards over and over. Sure. But still, not as many as Cleric. Cleric has got at least two on them. We will, of course, cover these in the future. We only do three of them at a time. Um, so we will, of course, have to circle back and do uh, ones. But we each have our own for this episode. And we will go forward from here. And next time we release a Wizards episode, we'll release three more and we'll go down the Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you also, at fourth, uh, fourth level, you get your ability score improvement. This is, everyone gets this at fourth level um, in your class. Uh, you can swap it's this your, out with a feat. It's your standard 8th, 12th, 16th, and 19th as yeah. well. And then, from fourth level to 18th, the general wizard doesn't get anything more but more spell levels. That's it. Well, what well, else do they need? Yeah, seriously, and, that's and, a fucked up. And, but they also get their arcane tradition stuff and ASIs. There's yeah. more going on there. There's still more going on, but... Yeah. Um, there is a big jump here to uh, Spell Mastery, which uh, you have s basically, uh, by 18th level, you've reached a certain amount of mastery over certain spells. Uh, you choose a first level spell and a second level spell that are in your spell book, and you can now cast those spell at their lowest level without expending spell slots. But you have to have them prepared. But you have to have They them have to be a part of your, your prepared spell list. Yep. Um, uh, you could also, by spending eight hours in study, you could exchange one or both of the spells for different ones of the same level. This again, we've said this before on the podcast, you shouldn't necessarily be spending your long rest sleeping. As much as, okay, you should be getting some sleep, otherwise exhaustion is going to kick yeah, in. Yeah, you need to sleep every 24 hours. But, I mean, at one point, as, as a DM for me, are you tearing and ask you? Sure. I'm tired of hearing Dan, Dan's talked too much already, <laughs> but... How much sleep does an adventurer need before you start adding exhaustion? Because it can't be two hours a night, right? Honestly, I, I, you need six hours to... Fa okay, here's just the uh, scientific uh, de um, answer for this. is You need six hours to function properly. If you don't have six hours, your body just will not function at its capacity. Yeah, I, I feel like I could say get, I don't know, 20 hours over a three-day span. Yeah, right. Sure. Um, so at 20th level you then get your signature spells um, this is when you gain magist uh, magistry uh, mastery over uh, two more powerful spells and cast them with also little effort this is going to be basically added on top of your spell mastery um, you get to choose two third level spells um, as your quote unquote signature spells and you will know as we go over some spells later on third level is kind of the sweet spot for spells yeah the other thing too about it is that you don't have to prepare these they're automatically considered prepared spells and they don't count against your prepared spells nice no. so you automatically get them but it's a 20th level come on yeah i mean it's it's cool but 20th level, I feel like, is too late for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're really only going to benefit from this for two two sessions. Yeah. Oh, and on top of it, you only get to cast each of those spells once per short rest. Yeah. yeah what's the, well, I mean, how, what's, how many short rests are you taking? What what epic dungeon crawls are you doing at 20th level? You're not. You're not yeah, you're just going to teleport, teleport, teleport. So you, you get them the once, and then you're good, right? Yeah. It just guarantees that you're casting your signature spells. No dungeon's going to hold you at 20th level, either. No. It just guarantees you're going to cast it every combat, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's... 
And I'm assuming it is combat. You didn't pick up, like, clairvoyance. No, they chose fireball. They t- yes. Let's- fireball and counterspell. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what this is. Everyone's like and probably not signature even, spell. Probably not even counter spell at this point because that's the bard's job. So <laughs> hey, I'm the twentieth level wizard. I'm not dicking about casting counter spell, bard. That's uh, you. Uh, hey barbarian, how many hit points do you have? Fuck the counter spell. I don't know. <laughs> if you're an abjurationist, counter spell is like, oh it you have that prepared every time. Yeah, okay. Right? Well, you'll know better than me on that. I yeah, yeah. I love abjurationists. Um which will actually bring us to our uh arcane tradition. So real quick guys. I know we want to roll the dice for this first uh, topic here, and I want to know right off the bat what's missing. What kind of improvements do you think you could make as a um, experienced dungeon master? Where the fuck did my dice go? You took it and tried there to it. Got it. I thought it was a lozenge. Okay. So roll. <laughs> That's why what I'm sucking on feels weird. Name of my sex tape. No. Okay. Roll the dice. Oh, a nine, a seven, again. and a four. I'm going last with a four. Uh, I got a nine. All right, so I'll tell you what's missing. Familiars. Oh, fuck yeah. you. That the, was my answer. Oh, yeah? Okay. Well, it might be slightly different the way I put it. I I miss the 3.5 version of the of the Wizards that got a familiar that was able to send the familiar out there to touch a target and then cast spells through the familiar. Mm-hmm. So you didn't have to be next to the barbarian on the front line in order to give them a... a a spell you can hit them with, you could just send your cat up to like brush up against the barbarian, and there mm-hmm. you go, right? Yeah, I I miss that, right? Yeah. I miss the idea of having um, the familiar. That I mean, do you get fine familiar as fine a, familiar is a first level ritual spell that you could get, which gives is you it on the familiar. wizard list? Though it is on the wizard list. I still think it needs to come standard. I completely agree. It needs to be a class feature at first or second level where you get a familiar or you get a wizard staff. And that is what I was going to say. Having like that staff of power, the fact that all of the magical staffs in this game, all the magical staves in this game are like high end magic items annoys me. A wizard staff should be something that they develop and, and build into and could like store spells for them or do fun things like light up a room or be a target for the things. So yeah, and I feel like we need to have more wands and rods as well. And I know that we're just going to get into the phallic jokes here and I'm going to try to avoid that, but wizards need to have that thing that their arcane focus should be just their their signature wand. Why not? Yeah. Right? Or their signature rod that's got the gem in the end of it, right? Bellatrix like- has the best wand. Yeah. Yeah, hers is cool as fuck. Yeah. I would like to point out with the Find Familiar spell, you can cast a spell with a range of touch, and your familiar can deliver it. Right, you can, but you don't get that standard. I know. Right? But that, that, that little thing from previous editions that is still okay. held over. And, but at what point are you taking this, this spell? Right? You're not going to get it on the first or second level. Right? You're going to wait until you've got a couple of second level spells... A couple of third level spells, a couple of fourth level spells. Now you get your last first level spell slot. Okay, now I'm going to take this because I've got enough beefy shit. Like, it's not going to be the I, first thing you I, take. I disagree. It's a ritual spell. So you're going to get it pretty quick out the bat. And it's incredibly practical of a spell. You could tell uh, you could telepathically but, communicate with it and everything else. But, so, but assuming that you've got a 16 of your intelligence and you're level one, that means that you've got four spells that you know. Six. Off first level, you have six spells. Sorry, you okay, fine. Six, six first level spells that you can six. choose. Six. You're not going to choose Find Familiar as one of those. You're going to get Fire Damage, Cold Damage, Acid Damage, Mage Hand, Magic Missile. I think Mage Hand is Cantrip, but Magic Missile. Like you're you're getting your your. So you get Chaos spell. Bolt, and then you yeah, start. You're, getting, you're getting your blaster spells first. Thing is, like all of those types of damage don't really exist at first level. They, I mean, you got your Shocking Grasp and uh, Burning Hands. But outside of those two, you don't really have anything for acid or poison or thunder. I mean, I think you have thunder wave at that point um, as well. Like, Yeah, but everyone's... Every first... Okay, you're picking up... Here we go. I'm getting into it now. Mage armor, magic missile, shield. You're grabbing those. There's three right off the bat. Shield, definitely. Right. Witch bolt, everybody likes their witch bolt. Chromatic orb... There's um, feather fall. People will pick up. Everybody loves identify and grease. You don't have time for familiar at this point, right? You have so many better options at, at low level. It's yeah. It's more. You have so many more necessary options. Like is what I would argue it as. I I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm I 
And I'm a fan of familiars and animal companions and those like side companions in my game. I, I've always been a huge you fan of them. You use them well. You do use them well. But like, I think as the more and more experience that I get in D&D, if I had a low level wizard and they were like, uh, oh yeah, I got a fine familiar, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? <laughs> like, we no, you got six here. spells. There's still so many other options. But there. you didn't pick up Featherfall? I mean, you have six hit points. <laughs> Pick up Featherfall. You fall off a table, you're dead. Yeah. <laughs> right? You fall out of your chair like Carrie tried to do ten minutes ago. I did ago. try to do that. Yeah. And I felt I pulled it off quite well. When we switched to video, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> People are actually going to see when one of us just stands up and fucking leaves for ten minutes. Or, or when Dan just holds up his finger. <laughs> and we just... <laughs> Pause mid sentence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To yeah. allow him to come. So when we live stream this, there's going to be no more. Uh, okay, no, you guys are going to like take me kicking and screaming this to the doctor to figure out what's going on. With there's going to be no more. That sounded more rapey than I wanted to. We're going to have to edit that out. <laughs> All right. So, but anyway, I still think that familiar. There's my answer. Familiar. You said staff, Terry. What do you have? Uh, the question was what's missing. Yeah. Bear with me on this. Pointy hats. No, it is a common magic item in uh, Xanathar's. I actually wanted to bring this up. I had no idea where to shoehorn this in, but you brought it in perfectly. There is a wizard's hat that is a pointy wizard's hat that you could pick up. And what it lets you do is it lets you cast any cantrip on the wizard spell list once a day with an intelligence roll. And I would have it as one of those pointy hats that says Oh, yeah, that's got like... And it's no, got like, it says Dunce on it, like the class idiot has to wear. This time. Does it have Mickey Mouse ears sticking out the side? I of love it? it. I love it. I wish it did. Do brooms just get up and walk naturally when you listen? Walk All right, Terry. Find apprentice. Find apprentice. Find apprentice. I'm pretty sure. Listen, I'm pretty sure that's just the bard. No, following you around. <laughs> yeah, just, just carrying all your shit. What do you read? <laughs> Is it a good story? <laughs> This and now, uh, mechanic wise, it might take a little bit of work, but it will help you locate, uh, like y- gifted, not necessarily sorcerers, gifted people that you know their location where you could go to them. They may automatically be a fourth level wizard or something like that. Or they may whatever, so that you could essentially attach them on as like a servant, an apprentice that will follow you. So you have an extra body with some lower level spells. Um, uh, that's it's basically like not like an uh, kind of like an unseen servant. And, and a, a bit more. An apprentice gets. Let's say levels with you, but gets uh, one cantrip and gets an additional cantrip every three levels. Yeah. And that's it. They're just with army. <laughs> or even like they can, you can even have them as a wizard who's, say if you get it at like 14th level, they come in at third level. They will still level with you, but they're, they're, that gap is always going to be there. So when you get to 20th, they're going to be at whatever, 10th or something like that. How do you manage them in combat? They're an extra body, but the I mean... same way the Ranger <coughs> manages their beast and and whatever, whatever. You roll so them so the action the action economy in fifth edition is my biggest stumbling block. That's but, why they can't be so, too powerful. It's just it's an extra body. It's something else. I to feel focus like by on. level fourteen though, all you're doing is saving them over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, but it, it depends how you use them. To be honest, you can keep them further back and be like, hey, you... They're co- protecting the cart when you guys run into the dungeon. Yeah. Or, hey, you go over there, stand in the corner behind that crate. You concentrate on Bane because I've got to do fucking whatever. I was actually going to say, this is really useful and, and you could use him as a guy who does that second concentration. Oh my god, I love the idea of a high-powered wizard becoming a warlock patron. Oh, no, I, I like love that this too. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like the idea of being able to buff your spells if you and your apprentice are concentrating on the same thing. Yeah, you know what? That's cool. I like the synergy of it. You're going to, I mean, you're essentially just going to get some meta magic stuff going. Okay, I'm with it. That's cool. We could just spin out on this apprentice. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to go off forever, yeah. forever. Yeah. But yeah. All right, Dan, let's get a commercial in. Cool. Hey guys, Dan here with Adam. Um, normally this is a commercial spot, but because year one of the It's a Mimic podcast has surpassed all of our expectations, because of you guys and uh, the interactions we've had with you guys, this community that's built up around this podcast, we really wanted to reach out to you guys and give you kind of a taste of what year two is going to be like. It's going to be even better. So normally we do lore episodes, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to start looking at the popular campaign settings that have been published already for 5th edition. Our world building series that we've had through year one is changing to be a breakdown of the races in Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Yep, we're still going to do class breakdowns because we're not even halfway done the subclasses, so each class is going to get even 
more subclass breakdowns as we go. Some of them will even have three or four episodes because of how many they oh, have. Oh yeah. We're going to be changing our coverage of the mob mentalities and changing it to uh, portfolios as we break down some of the big monsters in D&D. Yep, we're also going to take our Dungeon Mastery episodes and we're going to focus more on mechanics and the nitty gritties of the game and how to use them in session. We are also still going to be continuing with our really popular Dragon Mastery episodes, but instead of covering all the chromatics, now we're covering the metallics and more. We have more actual plays coming, including sequels to some of the stuff that we've already put out there. We've got more giveaways coming this year, more mailbags, and more random specials. But most importantly, the thing that Dan and I are the most excited about mm -hmm. is this second show that we are building. It's called The Campaign Builder, and it's Adam and I with our two completely different DM styles, kind of building inspiration for a campaign from session zero to the very end. We're going session by session, tier by tier, level by level, encounter by encounter, idea by idea. Idea, even if they suck. <laughs> yes, even the bad stuff will be in there so you can hear our foibles and how much that we are just as human as you. We also want your interaction. It's going to be a highly interactive uh, show and so it's going to be on the same channel. It's going to be an additional episode on the channel every week so you're going to get to hear our voices twice. We're not apologizing for that. You're welcome. But you know where to find us, okay? But your friends don't. We have our website, it's www.itsamimic.com. We're on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and most of the podcast catchers. But the thing that we are lacking more than anything else is the word of mouth. It really helps us. We need reviews on iTunes and every podcast catcher out there. And, and we need social media tags. So I'm kind of selling my soul to please help us get the word out because this upcoming year is just going to be more and more. It's bigger and better, and Dan is never going to sleep again. No, no, I rarely sleep now, as it is. Anyways, uh, guys, thank you again so much for the success of year one. We're really looking forward to year two, but we should really take the ball gag off of Terry because he's getting itchy and we need to record. Yes, that's more excitement than I'm comfortable with. Well, Welcome back to the It's a Vivid podcast. I'm just soldiering on. Fuck you guys. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we've been interrupting Dan for the last like 10 minutes straight. Continue, Dan. Robin Hood and Little John. Let's go. Dancing through the forest. Um, anyway, so we're going to be diving into our arcane traditions. And uh, let's be completely honest. They can be a little boring. There's not a whole hell of a lot to them. You are super wrong and I won with divination. But they're no, not no, no, boring. No, no, they could be a little boring, and I, I say. Do this you want to go one. to the school of adjuration? No, I, 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 I say this for one reason because not only are we going to be covering the school of abjuration, uh, divination, and illusion, Hello. we are also going to be covering the our favorite spells from that school in this section as well. Mm. So that is why I wanted to say that is just to get that out there. We're not only going to be covering what you get as your arcane tradition, but also kind of what are the fun school uh, spells in your chosen school. Okay, so before we get into that, though, what I didn't do before the commercial is list through the wizard exclusive spells. Oh, right. Yeah. And All of them? There are a fuck ton of wizard only spells. The sorcerer had the one. Did you guys cover that? I no. didn't listen to it. God damn it, Dave. I told him. I told him. That's it. Dave was nervous. He doesn't do this very often. Well, I mean, to be fair. Yeah, he's I said, trying... don't worry, Dave. I'll fuck it up more than you he, possibly he, could. Name it your sex day. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Dave. I'll fuck it up more than you. <laughs> uh, you basically just follow around Dave Franco. So there's only one. One of the Francos. There's only one for Sorcerer. And it's um, a Chaos Bolt. Chaos Bolt is the only sorcerer exclusive spell. Oh. Yeah. But for wizard, you get, and I'm going to go by spell level, uh, Find Familiar, Grease, Tensor's Floating Disc, Arcane Lock, Mouth's Acid Arrow, uh, you get uh, Nistool's Magic Aura, Rope Trick, Phantom Steed, Tiny Servant, Wall of Sand, Arcane Eye, uh, Everett's Black Tentacles, Fabricate, Fire Shield, Liaman's Secret Chest. Mordekainen's Faithful Hound, Mordenkainen's Private Sanctum, Autoluke's Resilient Sphere, Phantasmal Killer, Bigby's Hand, Passwall, Rary's Telepathic Bond, Wall of Force, Contingency, Create Homunculus, uh, Dromage's Instant Summons, Magic Jar, Autoluke's Freezing Sphere, Tensor's Transformation, Wall of Ice Sequester, uh, Simulacrum, Clone, Illusory Dragon, Maze, Mighty Fortress, Telepathy, Invulnerability, Prismatic Wall, and Weird. Hmm. 
You, I mean, you can get some of those in other ways. I mean, bards, some of those are rituals that a ritual caster yeah, feet can pick up. Warlocks and bards can get into them as well. Yeah, but those are, traditionally speaking, wizard exclusive in 5th edition. So there's a lot of good there's reasons. Is there is there a reason? Well, I know what the reason is. It's it's uh, vanity. But why are there no other spells that are like, why is there not Lathander's Golden Sphere for clerics? And like, name a spell after a god that created that spell. Because they're, they're uh, loyal to their one god. They don't. Yeah, but no, name the spell god. after the god. Like, if a wizard because, can create a spell. Because gods don't create spells. Gods have godlike magic, and they can snap their fingers and do whatever the fuck they want. Okay, sure, but why can't a god create a spell for their subjects and then name it after themselves? That's what I'm saying. I think I like the fact that there is a little bit of weird history in the in the D and D sphere where you wizards know, you, name wizards name after spells after themselves. Why well, can't mean, like that's clerics or dru- like why can't there be some druid exclusive spells that are created by dru- that are like named after? Well, specific I mean, you druids. could cast light and call it like Hellor's light or something like that if you wanted to. Like it's it would probably be it'd likely be the cleric which is which is naming the spell after the god. Yeah, more than anything. But, yeah. Okay. So as I said before, um, we are covering abjuration, divination. And illusion today. Um, these are the ones we've uh, kind of chosen beforehand. We are going to grab our dice right off the bat. Let's go and roll. Uh, first thing we're going to do is talk about what the school gives us, and then we'll talk about our spells. One boom. Let's go. I got a fifteen. I got a seventeen. Be it. Oh shit! I thought I was going first. It's going to be Dan, then me, then Adam. Okay, Adam with a nine. Okay, so um, I chose right off the gate one of my favorite spell schools, one of the most practical spell schools. Okay, I got to stop you, all right? Because earlier on you said right out of the bat, and I let it go, but you, now you just said right off the gate. So I need you to take those two sayings away, say them both correctly, and we can move on. What's the correct way of saying them? <laughs> right, right out, out of the, of the gate, gates and right, right off, off the, the bat. bat. <laughs> Did you guys notice that we in Canada we say right off the off the bat? We don't say right off the bat. We say rate. Right. Say those two things again. We don't say right off the bat. Right. We say right off the bat. R A T E. Ah, uh, okay. Where I'm from in England, we don't say our T, so we would say right off the bat. Right. We don't say the T. Right off the bat. Yeah. Right off the bat. Yep, correct. Well, welcome to doing a British accent. Just don't pronounce T's or R's properly. <laughs> Fair one. Depends where you are. The accent changes every 10 miles. <laughs> That's true. Or uh, thrust your jaw forward a lot. <laughs> 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 All right, fantastic. fantastic. This has been Accent Tips with a guy who should not be giving accent tips. You are not wrong. Um, so I got Abjuration. Uh, abjuration is the protection School. It is the uh, it is the defensive arcane school in every way, shape, and form. Um, it is all about banishing, protecting, um, blocking. It's where you find your counter spells, your dispel magics, your wards, your glyphs, your um, alarms. These all fit into the abjuration um, school. So right off the bat, you get abjuration savant, um, which you get when you choose this uh, arcane tradition at second level. Um, this lets you uh, inscribe abjuration spells into your spell book for half the gold and half the time. Now, there's a savant for each one of the basic eight schools. Mm-hmm. Also, at second level, you get arcane ward. What this lets you do is uh, when you cast an abjuration spell of first level or higher, you basically create a ward that uh, sticks with you. And this ward um, is basically a permanent, uh, or sorry, a Long rest lasting glyph that hovers around you that is a buffer of hit points equal to your uh, intelligence modifier plus twice your wizard level of hit points. Okay. That okay. That's pretty high then. Yeah, it gets pretty high. Uh, I would name him Bert. Uh, whenever you take this damage. That was a Batman um, joke. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Uh, the ward takes the damage instead, so like Bert. Yep. Um, I didn't know there was a Burt in Batman. Yeah, Burt Ward is the actor. Stop from saying Rob. Batman. <laughs> a, a Batman is 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 that the, the kid that runs out and picks up the baseball bat after the guy hits home run? Uh, it's like, I think it's the. Uh, I think it's the guy who wrote the Necronomicon. It's the person who's on bat and cricket, I believe, is, is a Batman. Yeah. All right. Um, now, no, no, you don't pronounce the T. Batman. Batman. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> plants. Anyways, whenever you take damage, the ward will take the damage instead um, until the ward is reduced to zero hit points. At which point you take the remaining damage. All right, I'm going to rename him Jason Todd. Then. Purely Continue. because, purely because this is wizards. I Ouch! Just, purely because this is wizards. I just want to clarify that a ward is like a thing that wards something, but a ward is also a child that you can be put in charge of. Yes. And being that this is wizards and they have apprentices, can we switch this out to just be <laughs> this, a young this, wizard? This is Jimmy. That's as, an as an adoration, as an adoration, because you're all about protection and and uh, security. This is Jimmy, my this ward. Is Jimmy, he my has ward. Hit points equal to this, and he will be taking the damage for me. Until he hits zero. Until he hits zero. Um, I do want to point out... I'm an unpaid intern. <laughs> Shut up, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're not allowed to talk. You're just there as a sponge. <laughs> Damn it, Jimmy. Cast Bane. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. They're right here. Second level. Um, so once the uh, ward hits zero hit points, uh, you will take the remaining damage. Um, however... Just picking up an eight-year-old child as a human shield <laughs> is the best thing. I'm ever. all about protection. Nah. <laughs> Jimmy cast shield. <laughs> just pulled him. <laughs> is Jimmy with a shield? <laughs> Can I use my reaction to cast shield? You've used your reaction. Can Jimmy use his reaction to cast shield? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> to cast mage armor on himself and pick him up and use him as a shield. Love it. <laughs> this is so hilarious. However, whenever you cast a level uh, abjuration spell of first level or higher um, throughout the day. The ward will regain a number of hit points equal to twice the level of that spell. Sure. Right? Um, you can only create the ward or, you know, wake him up next to you. Um, <laughs> Gross. Uh, when you finish a long rest. Okay. So uh, this is kind of a lot of your abjuration school abilities are going to be based off this arcane ward idea. At sixth level, you have a uh, protected ward. No. Projected ward. Yep. Yeah. Um, when a creature that you can see... That's when you throw uh, Jimmy. Basically, uh, when a creature you can see within 30 feet of you it takes from damage... from a melee weapon to a ranged weapon. <laughs> uh, shield. A right. melee shield to a ranged shield. It's a ranged shield. Uh, right. uh, whenever a creature within 30 feet of you you see takes damage, you can impose your ward to take that damage instead. Up to, of course, the ward having zero hit points, at which point that player um, will then take the remaining... Um, at 10th level, you get your impro improved abjuration, which whenever you cast an abjuration spell that requires an ability check as part of casting the spell, you gain your proficiency bonus to that ability check. Long story short, this is if you are trying to counter spell or you are trying to uh, roll dispel magic or something along those lines, you get to add your proficiency modifier to that roll, which is pretty awesome. Yep. Um, and then at 14th level, you have Spell Resistance, which you have advantage on saving throws versus spells. And you have resistance against the damage of spells. So you're just a barbarian wizard. You're a barbarian wizard, yeah. A warbarian. Uh, a barbizard. That's better. Yeah, I like barbizards. So uh, that's pretty much... Sounds like a Pokemon. Barbizard would be the name of my barbarian wizard, I think. <laughs> Barbizard? You can have a tattoo on his forehead. Barbizard Warbarian. <laughs> at your service. <laughs> I want you to make this character. Yeah. Okay, so... For one shot, I will. As for... Uh, actually, I'd like to rage! <laughs> <laughs> to kick your fucking ass! Next, we have our uh, the spells that are in abjuration. I'm not going to read through all of them because, of course, that would take forever, especially since we're doing three spell uh, three schools here. So I'm just going to choose my favorite three. Uh, the first one from third level down. Um, my immediate inclination is to take uh, counter spell because it's just an incredibly useful spell to mm -hmm. use. But I'm not. I'm going to go with magic circle. Love magic circle. What does it do? <laughs> so magic circle lets you create. A uh, 10 foot radius by 20 foot cylinder of magical energy that is uh, centered on the point you could see, um, which means you could do it as long as it's within 10 feet of you, you can create this thing. Um, and you choose uh, one or all of celestials, elementals, fae, undead, or fiends. These creatures cannot enter this through non magical means, just cannot. There's not even a save involved, they just can't. And if they want to teleport in, they have to roll a charisma saving throw. Um, the creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against creatures 
within the uh, cylinder, which means if they're shooting arrows or spells, they have disadvantage on those attacks through the walls. Um, they uh, Targets that are within the cylinders cannot be charmed, frightened, or possessed by any creatures that you specify with the spell. And when you cast a spell, you could uh, elect to cause the magic to operate in uh, reverse direction, preventing a creature of the specified type from leaving the cylinder. Or casting spells. Or casting spells. spells or, or, yeah, yeah okay. all that. Um, now, this spell lasts for one hour, does not require uh, concentration, and if you cast it at higher spell levels, adds an hour to that. So this could last up to seven hours. Hmm. As a DM, the way that I get around this with my fiends, for example, is area of effect spells. Yeah. Yeah. Right, that's not going to protect you from an area of effect spell mm -hmm. where you're having to make a save against a uh, spell save DC. Yeah. This is specifically about being targeted by something. Yeah, attack roll. But um, I'm, this is super useful for getting out of Disintegrate or Finger of Death or yeah. one of those, right? Like, yeah. I like that. What else do you have, Dan? Uh, next, for fourth to sixth level, I have Globe of Invulnerability, which I love as a spell. Um, it's definitely a good one to have as your uh, kind of fallback option. What it does is a immobile, faintly shimmering barrier um, surrounds you and remains for the duration, which is concentration up to a minute. Um, any spell of fifth level or lower cast from outside the barrier cannot affect the creature or objects within it. And uh, if the spell is cast using a higher, uh, even if the spell is cast using a higher level spell slot. So if it's an originally a third level spell or a fifth level or lower spell, even if they're casting it at seventh level, it still can't affect the people inside. Okay. Which is, mm -hmm. which is pretty badass. Uh, such a spell can target creatures and objects within the barrier, but the spell has no effect on them. Okay. Uh, similarly... Uh, within the barrier, uh, the area within the barrier excluded from areas affected by such spells. So this would get away from your uh, area of effect damage as well. Right. <clears throat> so as a DM, my way around this is to affect the environment directly above or below you. Yes, I cannot hit you with my no. magic missile. But if I knock the chandelier off with the magic missile and it plummets down onto you, the chandelier is going to hit. Yeah. yeah. Fair well. um, and this does not move. Now, this does have the option of casting this at higher levels. This is a 6th level spell. If you cast it at 7th, 8th, or ninth, um, you can uh, affect lower level spells. Or, sorry, uh, if you cast that at 6th, 7th, or, or sorry, 7th, 8th, or ninth spell level, um, you can affect another higher level spell within this. So, 6th level or lower if you're using a 7th level spot. 7th um, level or lower if you're using an 8th level spot. 8th level or lower if you're using a ninth level slot. Okay. Okay. Um, which is ridiculous and incredibly powerful. Finally, for our big Papa um, spells here, I'm going to go with Mind Blank at 8th level. Mind Blank is an action to cast, and it lasts for 24 hours. Um, until the spend spell ends, one willing creature you touch is immune to psychic damage, plus any effects that would read its emotions or its thoughts. This is the Barbarian we're casting this on. Divination spells end... The charmed condition. Yes. The spell even foils wish. Or spells of similar effects. So what this spell does is it removes your mind from any divination, anything else, all the way through. It's not as powerful as it sounds. Go through it again. So. Well, let me dispel magic on this. Until the spell ends... That's my thing on the abjuration. Yeah. Um, until the spell ends, one willing creature you touch is immune to psychic damage... Any effect okay. that would... All right, hold on. Psychic damage, which rarely comes up. Next. Um, any effect that would uh, sense its emotions or read its thoughts. That's only like three spells. There's a couple of monsters. This is going to be really useful in a Mind, mind Flayer campaign. Yeah, yeah. Mind Flayer campaign. Right? Yeah. Uh, or on the Astral Sea. But, I mean... Divination not... spells don't work against it. Right, okay. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. I'll circle to that. What else you got? And the charmed condition, which okay. doesn't isn't really popping up at this level when you have this. No. Did you know that there are very few wizard, like, arcane divination spells? Really? Yeah, there's 14 and one above sixth level. Oh, jeez. So this is not as powerful as it looks on paper. Now, there's a bunch of divination spells 
for um, the, the divine magic yeah. side of it, right? Yeah. So there, there's more to it than that. This is going to get you out of things like scrying and shit. That's what I, I would say is be... you're casting this on an NPC. You have to hide. Yeah, or you want to get that rogue in, but they've got a psychic that's or that yeah right, and so you need the rogue to sneak by to. There's a the lot property. of really practical uses for this spell, and uh, I mean it's eighth level. I feel like you're only prepping this spell when you have a game plan to use it yeah. ahead of time. Yeah, this is not something you're like, oh, I might use this. You're taking the long rest before the final assault or whatever, and yeah. you're prepping this. Yeah. Right. So uh, that's me. Next along the board here was Terry. That's right, Dan. I am going second. And today I am the Illusion Wizard. I will be covering the school of illusion. Illusion magic is essentially making uh, something seem real that is not real. Instagram. Right. Well... But Instagram is real. It exists. Yes, but nothing on Instagram oh, is actually real. That's true. You are. Yeah, get 100% a lie, always. Yes. I'm super excited that you said that before we do our shout-out, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the It's the Mimic page, which is nothing but truth. Uh, it's uh, objective truth all the way through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So, all right, let's go through. So, um, the the Illusion Savant, did you pronounce that Savant? Savant? Am I saying that correct? Savant, yeah. yeah. Savant? Savant? Savant. Uh, yes, no, the Illusion. It's God the damn. same Savant. thing as, as all Savants, except it's now uh, it's now Illusion spells. Um, half the gold. Um, and time. And time. That's correct, yeah. Um, like I said, I'm working with bad eyes here, so Dan is helping me read. Um, uh, when you reach second level, you get improved minor illusion. So when you choose this school at, at second level, you learn the minor illusion cantrip. If you already know this cantrip, you learn a different wizard cantrip of your choice. So it doesn't specify that it needs to be an illusion cantrip. When you learn a different one, it can be anyone is what I get from that. Uh, the cantrip doesn't count against the number of cantrips known. Uh, when you cast minor illusion, you create both the sound and image with a single casting of the spell. That's super useful. It is, yeah. Right. The, like, I always thought that was a big weak point to have the dragon not be able to roar. Here's, I mean, I, I know it's minor. It's well, here's minor. the thing, actually, before I go any further. when you, I think when you're an illusion wizard, you got to have the right DM or you got to connect to the DM first. you gotta, yep. you got to be saying, hey, look, I'm doing illusion stuff here. It can be very vague and there's going to be a lot of loosey-goosey stuff going on. Just don't be a dick, okay? Don't be like... No, he sees through it. That doesn't work. That doesn't whatever. Or or if I try and do something strategically, don't just be like, no, that doesn't work. you got to work with the player. Okay, so as a DM, you guys are avoiding dire wolves, okay? They've got keen senses, yeah. and it's all about smell. That's Here's my example, okay? Yeah. So you cast an illusion to distract it for a minute. I'm going to have it go and attack, and when it fails... Then it's going to stop and sniff and burn a round or two, and it'll still figure it out. Yeah, it's a delaying tactic because as a DM, I want to reward you as a player for casting it. Yep, right, and I want to reward the the strategy behind it, but it is still just just an illusion, still yep. a half measure, and it's not going to fool a dire wolf for long. Exactly, right. Even the T Rex followed the flare, and it's like, yeah, it's just a it's just a delaying thing. You you can't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's fair for DMs to be like, oh, it doesn't work because the dire wolf can smell you. Well, my dog can't smell the other dog in the mirror, but still puts her ears back. It's like, what the hell is that? Yeah, if you hide behind the door and call your dog, he's gonna run into the room and be like, where are you? Where 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 are you? And turn around and run back out again, trying to find you again. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's what it's all about. Okay, uh, uh, malleable illusion. So starting at sixth level, um, when you cast an illusion spell that has a duration of one minute or longer, you can use your action to change the nature of the illusion using the spell's normal parameters for the illusion, of course, provided that you can see the illusion. So essentially, um, once you have an illusion spell up on your turn, you can use your action to just change what it's doing. Uh, uh, change yeah. what it looks like. Yeah, I like the idea of like. you're like, oh, I'm going to make a, a white dragon. Terry, we're in the swamp. Sorry, uh, black dragon. Black dra <laughs> black, and then checking with the other black, green. DM, is it green or is it black? <laughs> it's up to you, bro. <laughs> is this, Brown dragon. Wait. Is this a swampy forest or just a muddy forest? <laughs> Um, illusory self so beginning at 10th level you can create an illusory duplicate of yourself in an instant um, almost indistinctual um, reaction sorry almost indistinct instinctual reaction to danger I'll say, that again. I'll say that again I want to say indistinctual at 10th level you can make a duplicate of yourself reacting to danger where that duplicate will be attacked instead of you as that a reaction you just means. pop this thing up and it gets attacked pop it up hit that not me Boom, yeah. that's it. 
Um, <coughs> once you use this feature, though, you can't use it again until you finish a short or a long rest. Okay, so you can't be doing this every turn. You get to use it once, and then you got to have a little 15-minute break, and you can do it again. That's super weak for 10th level. You think so? Uh, to you avoid one attack. Uh, as, as a reaction, you don't get hit. As a, for one attack. Right, okay. What reactions are you using as a wizard? If you're not doing counter spell. If you don't want to burn a spell slot, what are your reactions? You have shield, you have counter spell. I mean, there's a couple more, but there's not many. No, no, I'm with you. I understand that. It's, it fits good where it is, but as a 10th level ability, when you're getting attacked by everything that has multi-attack, yeah. everything has is a fighter with, uh, you know, three attacks, four attacks around, every monk is sitting there as a blender at this point, and you could avoid one of them. Yeah. You're an illusion specialist. You're halfway to level 20. Should be more than once. But you're keeping yourself back. You know, hopefully you're smart and you've got mage armor or greater visibility or invisibility or something like that where it's just another straight to your bow to just try and avoid something. Yep. Um, but you should, at that point, if you're a smart wizard, you shouldn't be getting hit a lot anyway. No, no and I agree with you, but I make this intelligence modifier times a day. Yeah. Yeah. Or but, rest. You know what? I, I like... Look, wizards are the most powerful class in the game. Right, that's You're not just wrong. that's just how it goes. Well, clerics, clerics are the most powerful sp- class in the game. Wizards are second. I would no, I'd say wizards. Wizards can do anything. So can clerics. Clerics, ha, a cleric can do anything because there are twelve different kinds of clerics, and so. But your nature cleric is not the big healer, right? Like while. You can pick a cleric and therefore have the opportunity to do anything. Once you walk through that door, you're committed to that thing. Yeah, you're right. A wizard can always do anything. Right? Bards can as well, but wizards have more punch to their magic. Yeah. So I still say that a wizard is your damage output at high levels. A wizard is your transportation output or or kerfuckery at high levels. A wizard is the one that's going to be getting all of the knowledge and information and scrying here, divining there. And they can just do a little bit of anything. And... All they need to do is find a scroll to be able to become infinitely more powerful. <laughs> uh, I, I I understand what you're saying, but like a lot of those things drew, uh, clerics could do as well. And like general clerics could do. General clerics can scry just like wizards can. I, I, it's splitting hairs, and I know it's splitting hairs. Clerics and wizards are the most powerful uh, classes in the game, bar none. But um, clerics have armor. They've got hit points to back up. To back themselves up. Wizards don't have either of those things. No, but they have Lehman's Tiny Hut, so who gives a fuck? <laughs> right? Like, Lehman's Tiny Hut is a rest mechanic. It's not a... Yeah, but if I stay inside of it, I'm, I'm fine. Right? Like, the wizards have a thousand... Words. You know what? Okay, fine. You can go right ahead and hope that your shield protects you. I'm going to teleport up there. Goodbye. Right? Like, I just... Wizards have so many more options. I'm talking high level. Yep, a high level enough. wizard has more options. I would say a tier two cleric is more powerful than tier two wizard, but a tier four wizard far outclasses a tier four cleric. I completely disagree, but I mean, we could have a long, a long debate yeah. about this. We're later. just whipping out spell lists and the, <laughs> yeah, right, right. And uh, my list is longer than yours, Dan. <laughs> All right, Terry, you were saying... Okay, uh, illusory reality. So by 14th <laughs> level... <laughs> Sorry to just completely derail your that's, thing there, Terry. Uh, that's what Terry and I do to you all the time. That's I know, but I'm actually a good person, so I'm sorry, Terry. You guys are actually getting much better at arguing now. You used to just argue for an hour, and now you're like, we're never going to come to an agreement. Glad to be friends. Let's move on. It's I'm, okay. We're not friends. <laughs> all right, fine. I'm getting into it. We're Fuck. Our no, don't do that. <laughs> so by 14th level, you have learned the secret of weaving shadow magic into your illusions to give them a semi-reality. So when you fine. cast an illusion spell of first level or higher, you can choose one inanimate, non-magical object that is part of the illusion and make the object real. You can do this on your turn as a bonus action while the spell is ongoing. The object remains real for one minute. For example, you can create an illusion of a bridge over a chasm and then make it real long enough for your allies to cross. Uh, The object can't deal damage or otherwise directly harm anyone. I am going to make a deck of many things. Non-magical. To say non-magical? It says non-magical. God damn it. Okay. Non-magical. Yes. All right. So much for that plan. Well, fine. Boulder. It, well, no. It, 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 but I can't directly I get to, damage. If I'm, if I'm no, it, it doesn't. It, the boulder just hovers above you for 20. Well, that's exactly... Oh, if I get to the chasm and I'm being chased by a horde of whatever, and you just, I will create a bridge except I will create mine up there. Okay? And then I'll leave it. And now it's going to fall. And, and kill. that's not directly harming them. Right? Yeah. I would say that you can't make fire... Right, yeah. right. That's that's the 
the direct interaction of it in a but i can way. make an inanimate structure up there that's yeah. i'm not i'm not manipulating <coughs> gravity i'm not making it fall it just um, does uh, because it doesn't say di- uh, it mm. the gravity it the can't gravity deal damage or otherwise directly but if down. hold on if i push you if i grapple you and i'm not doing damage and i drop you off of a cliff i just let go i hold you over the ledge and i let go i did not attack you the fall deals yes, the damage yes you did no i didn't i i grappled as my attack action but uh, but that was last turn i'm just moving you around cuz you couldn't break the grapple and now on this turn i'm just going to let go i didn't attack you i just let go yeah the way i would put this is this is basically a big styrofoam thing that's fallen from the sky it's strong enough to be able to support weight, but it's not strong enough to do damage. Ah, if it's strong enough to support weight, it's strong enough to do damage. No, no, no like, I'm sorry. And it, make the object real. Yeah. It, not yeah. make the object... A, but that object can't deal damage. Okay, all right. So, uh, um, can I make water? Are we going back to the water in someone's lungs? Well, can some, if someone drowns in the water, then I made real? If I make the water, and the water is real... And the barbarian drowns someone in it on their turn. Does that count? I'm going to say yes. Reward your illusion wizard yeah, for getting enough. this. And, far. Oh, and, and as the player, if I was in that situation, and if someone was to make the argument, it can't deal damage. I'd say it didn't. It used a completely different mechanic within the book. It didn't reduce any hit points when they were in the water. It just they just drowned. Now, if you create acid, if you create a sword, if you create fire beneath them, then yes, you're doing that. Like that's that's what you're doing, right? Like. You're out here to do specific damage, but I create the 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 giant, the illusion of the giant juggling boulders. One of those boulders is real, motherfuckers. Guess what? He dropped it. All right, I get what you're saying. I think the original intent behind this, just from the way it is, is that exact situation where you create an illusion of a dragon. That dragon, that illusory dragon, is not going to do damage like a real dragon. Well, it says but, inanimate, non-magical. I don't know. I, I don't have any problem whatsoever with you making a shield and holding it up and using the shield to protect yourself. If a kobold runs headfirst into that shield and just fucking beans himself, headbutting it and takes one point of damage, you did not cr- cause damage. The shield did not cause damage, the kobold did. right? And at some point you're going to have to split hairs. At some point the DM's going to have to make a call. And my point is here... Um, I know what you're saying, rule of inte- rule uh, as intended, because rules as written is kind of strange. Yeah. It's, Isn't it's one of those ones where it's weirdly ambiguous. And I'm going to say for 14th level, rule of cool. Yep, that's fair enough. Within, yeah, with, 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 within reason, right? Like, uh, the, I, have, I have one more small issue. What? You weave shadow magic. This is the first time shadow magic is brought into that's fair this point, entire yeah. thing. Like, what the hell? Like, just well, you make the illusion real. Why? Because you are so good at crafting illusions that you form them into dense objects. I don't see why that's a problem. There's shadow magic in places in other, uh, in other places in this game, like uh, rogues and uh, sorcerers and bards. And yes, I believe that there should be a shadow magic wizard of some sort. I think that's necromancy. I don't think that's illusion. Hmm. Shadow magic isn't isn't no. I would. That's not necromancy. Shadow magic would be its own special thing. Uh, Maybe conjuration because you have Everett's black tentacles, which you could summon. Look, they've got the wrong spells in the wrong classes, all in the wrong schools, all the way through this. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, there are some bizarre choices. Yeah, that's fair enough. But yeah. all right, Terry, what about these spells? These illusion oh, spells? Oh yeah. Okay. Got? Let me just. Um, I see. I'm I bookmarked it, Dan. Oh wow. So I'll go. You're you're the smart. I am, uh, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm what's called socially intelligent. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, I don't have any of that. <laughs> uh, I always used I'm to use the argument stance. in school when, uh, if somebody said, uh, I'm smarter than you, uh, I'd go, yeah, but I bet if somebody was going to beat me up, I could talk them out of it and you wouldn't be able to. Uh, okay, my first one is going to be color spray. Yeah, goody but You like color spray? I do. Uh, a dazzling ray of flashing colored light springs from your hand, rolls 6d10. The total is how many hit points of creatures this spell can affect. Creatures, this is complicated, once pay attention. Creatures in a 15 foot cone originating from where you are, um, affected in ascending order of their current hit points, uh, ignoring unconscious creatures and creatures that can't see. Starting with the creature that has the lowest current hit points each 
creature affected by the spell is blinded until the spell ends. Subtract each creature's hit points from the total before moving on to the creature with the newest, lowest hit points. A creature's hit points must be equal to or less than the remaining total for that creature to be affected. Let me just put this simply. If you have five town guards and they all have 10 hit points and you have uh, 6 d10 and you roll a total of 50, you can get all of them. If you roll 40, you can get four of them. Yeah. Essentially. Okay, yeah, that's no, pretty simple. If, if one of them has eight, you hit that one first. Yeah, you hit that one first. Yeah. I I I, I love that this is a first level spell. I love it because this is you getting out shit early. Suddenly, those goblins that attack you are not too much of a problem anymore at first no. level, where initially goblins are fucking terrifying. Can I just say, though, that, yeah, they have disadvantage in their attacks, and that's it, and that feels really... I mean, that's, that tracks our first level spell. Mm-hmm. Does blind does being blind not feel like a cop out in in fifth edition? In fifth edition, being blind is not made out to be as much of a problem as it should be. That's what I, I think. I right? agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. It gives you disadvantage on attacks, but you know what? Shouldn't it be given? Does it does it give you disadvantage on perception and sorry? <coughs> and, um, uh, yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, uh, I should perception was the wrong word. I should have said things like our survival checks. It should give. You should have. Uh, yeah, I would say on on wisdom based uh, skills, yeah. right? Any of them, I would say on a lot of the charisma based skills. But I mean, you're gonna start to get really like honestly. I would nitty gritty. I would say I, maybe this would be something I put across in session zero with blindness because if they were like, oh, I want to do a medicine check. Well, you're blind, so definitely disadvantage because you can't tell what's sticking out of them, you know, or whether or not they're longer. <laughs> there. So um, funny enough. I find color spray like the perfect rogue, uh, like arcane trickster spell. I find because uh, yeah. you have advantage on any target that it's a, actually it's a great, but that is a great arcane trickster spell. Yeah, um, color spray. <coughs> it's also incredibly relevant mm-hmm. all through the game. I played an arcane trickster, and never once used color spray, and yeah. I should have done. Yeah, right. I just Every that. single level, you get basically a base paladin or fighter's level hit points. That you get to add every spell slot above the first that you uh, mm-hmm. take that you cast a spell with. That was the most complicated way of saying that. Can you do that again? I didn't. Follow you me. get six d ten right off the bat with color spray. Yeah. Okay. As a first level spell, you can do that first level. Mm-hmm. If you use a higher level spell slot, every spell slot you add another two d ten. Sure. Right. Which means if you're casting this as a ninth level spell, you're not. But okay, fifteen d ten is not a good I'll- use of. To give to give fifteen d ten hit points disadvantage at level seventeen for is, one round. That's not a good use of your ninth level spell slot. I'm sorry. I okay. Yeah. I, I yeah. You got better options. At that you point. got better options at that point. Wish, but I mean, <laughs> weird. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, I'm going to move on. Yeah. Is that cool? cool. Unless uh, okay. For my second one, I'm going to use a fourth level illusion spell of greater invisibility. Okay. This seems so simple, but for people out there who like to play tactically, this is huge. Okay, so one action, touch, it's verbal and somatic, no material component needed. It is concentration, it is up to one minute, that is ten rounds. But you are a creature you touch, becomes invisible until the spell ends. Anything the target is wearing or carrying is invisible, as long as it is on that um, uh, on that target's person. Okay, so essentially you can now become invisible. You are much harder to detect, and you can blast off those spells. And I believe you don't come back from invisibility with greater visibility. Is no, that you right? don't. You blast off spells. You can blast off spells and then finish your movement to get out of the way. Yes, they will know where you were when you cast the spell. So I would say be conscious with your movement, blast something off, and move. But you need to protect yourself as a wizard, so a good fourth level spell, greater invisibility for uh, for a lot of combats. That's okay. a great spell to pair with a rogue, yet again. Yeah. like ca- Because it's not target self, it's target touch. Yeah, absolutely. Cast that on your rogue and just watch them absolutely destroy. Okay. Dan, here's my last one. All right, let's hear it. You tell me if I get this right or wrong. You know where we're going here, Adam, don't you? Yeah. Simulacrum. Sure. Seventh level illusion. Casting time, 12 hours. Casting time, 12 hours. I'm saying this for the DMs to know as well, okay? If your players start saying that they're going to blast off Simulacrum... So for the second round of combat, I'm going to cast Simulacrum. I'm gonna cast- no, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. Um, components is verbal, uh, somatic, and a material component of snow or ice in quantities sufficient to make a life-size copy of the duplicated creature. I love that the duration of this, though, is until dispelled. Yeah. This is last forever. 
Okay, so I'll try and say it as simply as I can because there's a lot of words here. You essentially make a copy of yourself, I believe with half hit points, that doesn't, it can't learn anything but has all of your statistics. I was talking earlier about a Find Apprentice spell. Yeah, this is it. Fuck that. Just do this. <laughs> Just do this. This is everything. This is everything that you needed. You've gone from Jimmy to James. Yeah. <laughs> so now you've created James, okay? He has all of your statistics. He can't learn anything new. Um, they don't come with any weapons or equipment, but that's okay. Everybody's got a spare battle axe or something hanging around. Um, but essentially, you now have another body with a good amount of hit points that can get in there, that can cause some damage, um, and has all of your statistics. Does it get all your spells? Hmm. What are the... Uh... It has all your stats, so your spell casting ability has got to be the same oh, oh. number of spell slots, but it can't learn spells. However, it can know cantrips, right? It just can't learn anything new. So, so it would this know... Is not, this is not just a servant. This is not just summon dude. Nor can it regain expended spell slots. So when you make it, it has the same spell slots as the creature you make it, but it never regains them. Okay, so it will have everything that you have except a 7th level spell slot because you burned it to get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So in theory, load up another spell slots. Yeah. Right? Make this guy's going to have everything but except one 7th level spell slot and is able to cast it. He can't regain spell slots at all, but the cantrip should be able to stay yeah. consistently. I have a far better use for the spell. What? Uh, you have that one NPC that you hate, absolutely hate. All you need is some hair, some fingernail clippings, something of his or hers, and you make them and then just tell it, go wreck town. Hmm. Right? Go. No, I believe it doesn't. I, I think it just looks like snow or ice. It just looks like the snowman. The duplicate is a creature partially real and formed from ice or snow, but it uh, it will still... At least resemble the creature. At the very least, will yeah. still resemble the creature. It's made from ice and snow, but it'll still look like the creature. Yeah. Right? So, you could have this, I think, an evil campaign. You make your good holy paladin, and then you just besmirch his name. Hmm. You need a cantrip that does cold damage. Besmirch should be a bard spell. <laughs> yeah. Just like a, high, a more vicious version of Vicious Mockery. I think I would love it. Yeah. Yeah, no, you... you Wait, Frost. Yes, but you. my point is you need Ray of Frost for this. Because mm -hmm. where else are you going to get your snow or ice in the middle of a desert campaign? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or in the Underdark, right? You you need to be able to get that spell component, and that's one that's slightly problematic. Yeah. So I think you need to plan ahead of time. You don't want to burn a spell slot because you want them to have all the spell slots. Yeah. So it has to be a cantrip. So Ray of Frost is your answer there. Yeah. yeah. If you do want to use it, you can heal it with 100 gold worth of rare herbs and alchemical ingredients. Or herbs, even. If you cast a spell again, you can only have one of them active at a time. So if you cast a spell, your other one will die instantly. It takes 12 hours to cast, so I'd start casting it. Yeah, once. but it lasts until it's done. Right? It, it lasts until it's dispelled. Hmm. So, so that's Or it, it dies. That's it. That's me. That's the School of Illusion. All okay. right. I guess it's on to me now. Yeah, I know. God, how long is this fucking podcast? Well, you guys won't shut the fuck Three up. Three days. So here we go. I've been sitting here patiently not saying anything. So, the School of Divination. <laughs> that's a good look. So, the School of Divination. This is the best one, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> that's your job. That's why you're here. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm going to tell you why mine is better than yours. Okay, sure. Um, first and foremost, uh, you're a diviner that is trying to see through space. Time and consciousness. So you, you're you thinking bigger picture right from the get-go. Dan, I swear to God, if you drop that paper one more fucking time. <coughs> Just die! <laughs> <laughs> so you get uh, Divination Savant, which is the exact same thing as before. Uh, half the golden time to copy a Divination spell into your spell book. Um, now here's the thing that we didn't talk about with Savants at all. With the Savant thing is, aren't you normally picking these these things for your spell school? for free when you level anyway. So you're copying, like, are diviners seeking out other diviners to get their their spell books? Yeah. Necromancers are seeking out other necromancers. I think that needs to be a hook. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So otherwise, it's like, what's the point of this thing if the necromancer is just taking the necromancy spells anyway? Right? So yeah. this, this needs to be used appropriately. Um, and it almost encourages you to not choose from your own spell school early. Mm-hmm. Which is a little bit strange. I think it's kind of counterproductive, mm -hmm. right? But anyway, so you do get that. Then you get at second level portent. 
when you get when you choose the school, you glimpse the future, and uh, or you get a glimpse of the future, and you start to become hyper aware of it. When you finish a long rest, you roll two d twenties, record those numbers, and then you can replace any d twenty roll. Oh, I like that. that that you roll or someone else rolls that you, that like if you see someone else doing a thing requires a d20 roll, you can choose one of these numbers and, and. So this includes enemies. If you roll a six and a three, for example. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So rolling low can be a really good thing too. Yeah. You want to crit you, and botch. You want snake eyes on this. Yeah. Right? Like that's a load of fun. And you do this after every long rest. You can only use each one of the rolls once. And you lose anything that you didn't use up to this point. So every long rest kind of like regenerates this whole thing. Um, but you, you are consistently starting your day with these two magic numbers just sitting oh, there waiting. That's powerful, isn't it? At second level, yeah, right? That's like, pretty badass. This is what, uh, I, I could just stop talking about the school right now. Yeah. I'm in. I'll take it. I'm in. Yeah, you're right. I'm in for this. Um, so beginning at sixth level, you get expert divination. Uh, well, that is when you are casting divination spells, uh, it comes so easy. You, to you that um, you are actually only using a fraction of your power. So if you're casting a 5th level divination spell, you actually regain a 4th level or lower spell slot. I like it. Which means a divination wizard is consistently casting spells. And this is encouraging you to be casting spells, uh, divination spells, at higher levels. This becomes problematic in a minute because there are no 7th or 8th level divination spells. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and then at 10th uh, level, you get the third eye. You can use your action to increase your powers of perception. So you get the following benefits. Um, you get dark vision out to a range of 60 feet. You get ethereal sight, which means you can see the ethereal plane out to 60 feet. You can read any language. Or you can see invisibility into 10 feet. You can choose one of these four. Um, and you can do it uh, once per rest okay so it this will regenerate on a short rest too mm -hmm. so if this is super powerful for your human wizards yeah um and there's not many people that are getting shit past you at this point right which i guess is the point of being a, a diviner uh and then finally you get greater portent which is starting at 14th level <laughs> the visions in your dreams intensify you roll three d20s for your portent feature instead of two which at 14th level doesn't feel like a huge boon but this is such a powerful second level ability. Like this is still hefty. Yeah, I, honestly, I'm still cool with it. It doesn't feel like a big increase, but the big increase was at level two, mm -hmm. right? You're just getting a cherry on top, and even more. So, yeah. so I'm a fan of of diviners. As far as the spells, um, they only have one cantrip. Diviners only get the one, and it's True Strike, which is the womp womp of all cantrips. Yeah, uh, Abjuration only get the one in the Blade Ward, which is another womp womp. womp, womp. womp. Sure. But, um, well, I mean, you want to be an evocation wizard for your cantrips, right? That's where all the good shit is. But uh, we broke it up in, into the tiers. So first to third uh, level spell. Everyone wants to say detect magic, identify, detect thoughts. These are all in this school, and they're all super powerful. But uh, I'm going to go with uh, locate object, which is a second level spell. If you can describe or name an object that is familiar to you, you can sense the direction of that object uh, as long as it's within a thousand feet of you. If it's in motion, you know which direction it's going. You can hunt shit down. This is better Hunter's Mark than Hunter's Mark. Yeah. But this doesn't work on <clears throat> creatures or anything else. Uh, no, this is specifically locate object. There's yeah. locate creatures and yeah. other spells. Yeah, it does it, but it works on the on the cart that was attached to their horse or that fancy dagger that you saw them carrying. Yeah, right? Which, I mean, there are ways around this. I'm gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna picture... I want to locate Terry's top knot. That's what it is. And then Hello. I'll chase him around. It's not a top knot. This is called a messy bun. I don't even give a shit. <coughs> um, it's not on the top. It's on the back. Yeah. It's a back knot. It's a back knot. It's a back bun. It's a back knot. Uh, you let's never not talk about your back knot. Don't bun. be talking about my back knot yeah, either. We're not going to talk about your back bun or your back knot. The other thing is that uh, with this spell is that you can locate any specific object that's known to you as long as you've seen it up close, and you can do you can find it within thirty feet of you. So if it's like lost in the bog and you're close to it, what's or up close? Same room. Within in 30 feet. Within, within, 30 oh, sorry, feet. within 30 feet. Yeah. So, uh, alternatively, the spell can locate the nearest object of a particular kind. So, you can be like, you know what? I need a hammer. Where's the nearest hammer? 
bang, you you got it. And it, uh, <laughs> bang, you got a did hammer. That. See did yeah, that. right. So, um, <laughs> interestingly enough, the spell cannot locate an object of any thickness uh, of lead, even a thin sheet blocks a direct path, which just encourages DMs to be like, no, there's a, there's a lot of lead around here. <laughs> you, you can, uh, you, yeah. know, you know, there's lead. Yeah. Every chest you find is lead lined. There's a lot of oh, there's a yeah, there, there's a cupboard full of pencils. <laughs> yeah, right. So <coughs> it's graphite, not lead. Uh, D and D, I bet it's lead because it used to be lead. <coughs> Fair enough. Boom. So for fourth to sixth level, look, true seeing, scrying, even legend lore, locate creatures. What you guys are talking about? This is all in here. These are really common ones that people would choose. I'm doing a special shout out to Rary's telepathic bond. It takes one action. You got a range of thirty feet. It lasts an hour without concentration, and it's a ritual. You can forge a telepathic link among up to eight willing creatures of your choice. Your party. Your party and their (laughs) familiars. Creatures with an int score of two or less uh, do not get to be uh, affected by them, but everybody else is uh, psychically linked, and until the spell ends, the targets can communicate telepathically through the bond whether or not they have a common language. Oh, shit. Woof. Yep. Yeah, yeah it does work awesome. on dogs as well. Wait for it. The communication is possible over any distance, except it can't go planar. Okay, so so you can if I cast this and we all split it, we split the party, we can now go uh, I, I can help you solve that puzzle. Yeah. What level is this? Uh this one is uh fifth level. That's not bad. So I could tell you when I went out of line of sight and fell down a pit and a gelatinous cube fell on top of me. Exactly. <coughs> At the time I couldn't. Um, and then the last one, the uh, 7th, 8th, or ninth level. There are no 7 or 8 level divination spells for wizards. There's only one ninth level. So I'm going with Foresight. Which I like anyway, because it, case, it costs one minute to cast. The duration is 8 hours. Again, not concentration. But you touch a willing creature and bestow a limited ability to see into the immediate future. Which means the target can't be surprised and has advantage on attack rolls. Ability checks and saving throws. Additionally, other creatures have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. For eight hours. For eight hours. So you just, I mean, what else are you doing as a divination wizard up at ninth level? Like, this is the only option. So you're just going to go get your meat shield, your tank, whatever, and be like, hey, be super effective. You have advantage. Hey, champion fighter, have advantage on every attack. Yeah. For the rest of this session. Go. Yeah. Right? We're laughing. So divination wizards, when you sit down and you go, oh, you're a psychic. You look into your crystal ball. Who gives a shit? Well, actually, <laughs> this is super freaking impressive. Yeah. I freaking love the divination wizard. as, cool. as uh, Actually, someplace. I now love the divination wizard as well. And yeah, I there's still nerds it, that look into crystal balls. I wouldn't give it a second thought. But now I do. I'm, I'm super regretting getting our one divination wizard killed in our campaign. Yep, shouldn't have done that, Dan. Whoops. Hey, everyone, it's Adam. Dan just called me and uh, explained to me that while he was editing, he noticed some serious audio glitches while we were doing our shout-out. So we've got to re-record it, but he has no voice, and Terry has disappeared into some uh, techno disco club. I think he's on an acid trip. Nobody knows for certain. So it's just me now doing the shout-out, a re-recording of it, because it's important that we give a proper shout-out to Kenku Craft. They're on Instagram, and they've got one of the most fun pages when it comes to making uh, terrain and minis. They've also got a YouTube channel, which is on hold at the moment, but uh, I actually won a contest from them like a year ago, and they sent me a bunch of really cool shit. So I really wanted to say to everyone, Kenku Craft is definitely worth following if you don't follow them already, and you can see all sorts of cool uh, minis and the way that they design encounters. There's a few pictures of maps and whatnot, and uh, I'm just... I'm always impressed with the quality of the photos that are there, as well as the the minis that they're working on. So uh, go check out Kenku Craft on Instagram, and uh, we'll all pray for Dan's uh, illness to pass, and hopefully his swollen testicles will recede eventually. Until then, let's get back to the Wizards episode. Now, we get to the part that I love the most whenever we get to do these class Do you really? Is this your favorite bit? I love this bit. 
like going over the classes is super fun. Diving deep into the mechanics of them is super fun as well. But really tossing out these interesting character builds, these really, really uh, interesting ways to use these classes uh, and these subclasses is, is really what I go for in these episodes. So, guys, we're going to grab the dice. We already, we're already we all old hats at this now. We need. I want to roll the dice and let's hear a creative build. Um, single new creative idea for your character. Okay. I'm going straight to creative build. I don't even need mine. I don't know what I'm going. You guys ready? One, two, three. Let's go. I got a 15. Uh, Adam botched. Dan got a 10, but Adam knocked me down to a 5. And so, so that means I go first. Dan my goes 10. first. I go. Oh, they rolled back to a 15. Fuck you. But you're going to roll 20. 20. <laughs> so fuck you. Uh, so my, my idea for a character, I... I I really wanted to embrace the fact that your wizard is going to be a bit of a shut-in. It's going to be kind of weird. Uh, I mean, they literally get the spell weird. So I, I really wanted to embrace this fact. And I was looking through the School of Abjuration, and I was like, this guy is a... Uh, anyone who's in the School of Abjuration, they're all about protecting. Um, they're about warding things. If you read through the spell list, they get so many ways to just kind of throw up these wards and, and protections to prevent themselves from being seen and scried upon or, you know, prevent people from entering places they don't want to go. And I thought, okay, so this is your tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist mm -hmm. is your school of abjuration wizard who is sitting there and like, no one could ever come and interact with him. Everyone's out to get him. The Illuminati is real and I have to figure it out, but I'm not a diviner. I'm a abjurationist. So I'm sitting here like, protecting myself and those around me because I do not want the Illuminati to know what is going on, right? <laughs> and I I love this character idea of this incredibly powerful wizard who has cr got crippling social anxiety, <laughs> right? Make this guy level 20, but he doesn't want to go outside yeah. at all, right? So and, he's got kind of famous, but he can't handle it. Right, like there's, he's the, he is the wizard in the tower that no one can access. Yeah. Why can no one access it? Because he does not want to talk to you. Yeah. Why doesn't he want to talk to you? Because you are a lizard person and you are going to come and, you know, put the worm in his brain and take him over and that is not okay. Or even that's that not going to happen. Or even because it's like uh, personal interaction, that's terrifying to him. Even though he's the most powerful person on the plane, probably yeah. at level 20 wizard or one of them, he still thinks that you're terrifying because you want to have a conversation with him. Exactly, right? And you could be uh, a commoner and he will be terrified of you because you could be sent from them yeah right i just I, I i was nerding out about this character love it and, and like he's he's spending all day every day creating wards and creating walls to prevent people from coming in um and researching this shadow organization behind the scenes who are really controlling everything and moving the gears in society yeah that's what this guy is so that's me love it Love it. I think I was going second, right? Yeah. And I am going to go completely opposite to what you've said, but it was inspired by something you said to me, I think last week when we were doing Sorcerers, where you talk about how nerds are cool and nerds are sexy now. Yep. And I got thinking about my character and I was like, you know what? That's what I'm going with. That's what I'm going with is that because I was, uh, I watched a couple of weeks ago, I was watching, uh, is it 21 Jump Street or 22 Jump Street? I forget. I watched them both. Where they go, 21 Jump Street, where they go back to high school and Channing Tatum and, uh, yep. and, uh, and Jonah Hill. And or Johnny like, Depp. And he's like, and he's like, what the fuck is going on? Because Dave Franco's like got his backpack on with two straps and like the nerds are cool and now everyone's worried about the environment and stuff. And I was like, you know what? That's how I'm going to play my wizard is actually super cool and people are genuinely impressed by his abilities and nobody wants to talk to the meathead jock barbarian anymore because everybody's just really into uh, really into Francis whatever his name is and uh, uh, Papa is actually going to be taking me out on my yacht if you'd like to come with me the weekend and actually make the wizard sexy and that people are like and he's kind of cocky and arrogant with his abilities and all of these idiots around who can't keep up um, he's the one who's putting his hand up first in every class saying no we're all about you know self sustainability and yeah I've actually recently just come back I was building wells well actually I was I was actually moving the earth with my magic uh, over in Chult I was actually protecting the pygmies over there and everyone's like oh my god and like he's like f like loving it so I would almost play him like a bard but he can back it up he is not convincing you that this thing is real he is making the illusion of something fantastic yeah. that's why you buy it or whatever uh, so no, yeah I, I, yeah, I, like, I, this I want this super cool cocky wizard and everyone's gonna place uh, like approach this guy he's an arcane spellcaster who's super cocky and is just like all about himself they're gonna approach this guy as if he's a bard yeah, yeah. and then he backs it up yeah right that's it yeah he can back it love up love it absolutely love it 
Adam, what you got? All right, so here we go. Um, I'm going to be a total dick about this, and I'm going to make a halfling diviner. Wait for it. My halfling diviner. First and foremost, he gets... The reason that I'm going with the halfling diviner, Terry's all like pissed off about why I waited so long for this. And here's what it comes down to, Terry, and I'll tell you why, because there's a mechanical reason tell for this. Tell me why. So, a first... Halfling th- luck is playing into this somehow. Yeah, absolutely. So you already have portent, which means that you uh, are... You get these two extra rolls. You also get the halfling luck You're now not allowed ability, to play wizards anymore. Uh, right? Lucky, which... Uh, when you roll a 1 and a d20 for an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, you can re-roll the die, and you must use the new roll. I'm also going to take the lucky feat, which gives you luck points where you can spend one luck point to either roll an additional d20 on an ability check, an attack roll, or saving throw, or force, uh, or you can do it when someone else rolls against you, mm-hmm. and then you can choose which one to use um, before the outcome is... Um, is uh, so what are you naming this guy? DM's Bane. Wait for it. I'm also going to get the Luck Blade, which allows one reroll. Um, one or it allows you to reroll one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw once per day. It's a legendary item, but I'm going to use my um, my attunement slot on it. The Ring of Evasion is only a rare item, and it allows you to expend a charge to succeed on a deck saving throw. Oh my god, um, that you had failed as a reaction. You can also get legendary dragon masks, which allow you to succeed on a failed saving throw once a day. Um, and maybe a clockwork amulet. Now, this is a common item that allows you to uh, take... Uh, sorry, it allows you to forego rolling an attack roll and instead use a 10. And that will work <coughs> most of the time. Yep, and because I'm so low... Like, I get this, this ability that's important at such a low level... I can get Indomitable, which makes you re-roll a saving throw yeah. if I cross-class nine levels into Fighter. Swashbuckler um, at level 17 uh, just means that if you miss, you get to roll again. There are a number of ways. The Zealot gets to re-roll on some saves. Yeah. There are all sorts of multi-classing abilities here. But the point is that this Halfling is just the luckiest fuck in the world because he is existing five seconds in the future. Mm-hmm. All of the time. Nicholas Cage. Uh, kind of. I was thinking more Dr. Manhattan. Oh, never been. You've never been to Dr. Manhattan? No. Uh, that doesn't make oh, he's one of the Watchmen. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I love the idea of just... The Watchmen. Of just being weird. Your eyes are always white and everyone's like, um, hey, uh, do you guys want to go gambling? That does not give me pleasure. I know the outcome of oh, what happens. Oh my god, you created Bran Stark. Well done. Oh, well, yeah, kind of, right? <laughs> but you always know what's going to happen, and, and you're going to succeed on your rolls. I would I would maybe say, if you create this character as the DM, I'd say, please, can I just make that your legs don't work? Can I at least just, can you <laughs> give me that? Because you ruined Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, this yeah, is but, exactly what happened. But, D&D were sitting down. But, but, I'm, but I'm sitting down, and I'm saying... I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I know. And no. <laughs> this is this character in and of itself is not big on damage output. It's not a skill monkey. It's just pure flavor to being able to say, no, I foresaw it differently. This is how it is. Right? And and when the, the DM technically rolls and says, oh, I hit you. Says, Try again. And, okay, I actually missed you. I knew he would miss me the entire time. Or I love even roleplay interactions being as the other person never gets to go. It's just like chess that's already been won in the mind. Yeah. So it's just like we would like access to the door. You're going to tell me we're not allowed access to the door, but I'm going to introduce this person. You don't need to see their identification because of this. No, she is that person. I can prove it. Here we go. Can they open the door? I think that that's just a really fun character to play. But I, I will never halfling, DM this guy. I never, never, never the halfling lucky trait. I, or I may even, if I was to talk to the DM, do it so that they're so shit it becomes they're luck they're shit but they're so lucky and they don't really know why for whatever reason that they actually end up being good so they they <coughs> perhaps actually missed with the lightning bolt but for flavor I'll say the the uh, fighters attack the last one made the dragon step backwards and so they got hit by the lightning bolt that should have missed but they're lucky and so I, I also like that the two skills that I'm picking for this by the way are going to be insight and investigation not a knowledge no because I want investigation to be like um. It's there. Yeah. And I also want... Because I'm going to take locate object, locate creature. Yeah. These are the spells that I'm going to get, right? So it makes sense. And I also want insight to, to be like, I know you're lying. <laughs> and it's, just, and like, it's just... It's so weird and creepy. And I like it because it's just this halfling that just sees and knows. And every time oh. they try and lie, just... Shh, shh. <laughs> yeah. shh, shh. 
And so they tell the truth. There we go. There we go. I got to pick up Zone of Truth somehow as well to help with this. But I just really... Dip into high powerful class of cleric, yeah. There we go. There it is. <laughs> but I just really like this, this character. And again, I would not... He would not be the focal point of the party. He would be the guy in the back that never says anything until all of a sudden... <clears throat> Well, if you'd like to know the answer, it's this. Yeah. Or, and and that's it. You let everybody else try to figure out the puzzle, and you just sit back and be like, "Well, I had an advantage on my on my freaking um, investigation check on this, but I rolled a twenty earlier today, um, and uh, I rolled a one with that. I'm gonna use my lucky to re-roll, okay? And so, anyway, you end up with a twenty-seven into your investigation. Yeah. And it was like, DM, can I just please know the. Uh, Know the answer to this? It's it's coming across as very uh, Benedict Cumberbatch type of Sherlock. Yeah, that yeah. kind of arrogance is what I'm kind of getting now. Uh, absolutely, I yeah. would I would even say we'd be a little Tony Starkish as yeah, well. Yeah, just yeah. being like that futurist kind yeah. of. Of I knew this was going to happen. I see it's going to happen. It, when they go in, did you guys both seen Endgame? Everybody, look if you haven't seen Endgame now, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Spoiler alert: here it comes. But he sits down and he go, they go, hey, we need some way to like do time travel. And he goes, no, it's impossible. 48 hours later, it's like, okay, so I solved it. Right? Like, that's this character, right? Yeah. I'm leaning into the intelligence, but it's uncanny and supernatural, his yeah. intelligence, just because he's just rolling all of the odds in his favor all the time. Yeah. I was, oh, man, if there's some way, again, you can talk to your DM, just on that one example you just gave, where it's even like it's kind of flawed. So it's like you can see the future to the point where it's like someone mentions time travel, it's possible. How do we do it? Is it? I don't know that yet, but I've seen the future. We do achieve it. I just yeah. don't know that part yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely love it. I, I, I hate to run it, but I, I would love to be at a table with it. I would also make grand declarations too, like only four of us will get across this bridge. And then when six of us do, I'm like, we have changed the outcome of space and time <laughs> through our own heroic deeds. Like there'd be a lot of that shit yeah. as well, right? <laughs> I just think this would be a lot of fun to play. So. <laughs> I just bu- bullshit a little bit. If someone argues it, shh. Did you just press the digitation wind across? But- <laughs> We're thirteenth level. I'm going to use Dalmaturgy to make you quieter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adults are talking. I love it. I love it too. Dan, back to the studio. <coughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> so. That'll be it for this week's episode on Wizards. Uh, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube, as well as dozens of other podcast apps. You can also find us at www.itsamimic.com or email at us at info at itsamimic.com. Thanks for listening to the It's a Mimic podcast, and make sure to check us out next week when we are covering Kobolds. Woohoo! Nice. Finally. Finally. This has been a long time coming to get the Cobalt. It was a long time coming to get the Wizards, too. Like, yeah, yeah, Wizards, it was good. It was good. It was a long one, but it was fun, wasn't it? It was yeah. a little rambly, but that's okay. That's all right. That's what we do. Anyway. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> bon nuit. Thank you for listening to It's a Mimic. Check us out online at itsamimic.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have questions you would like answered by the guys on the show? Send them an email to itsamimic at gmail.com. Tune in every Tuesday for more. Okay, guys. I don't know why I'm going to ask you to this because both of you have been vehement. 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 I don't know what either of those words mean. Okay, hold on, hold you on. You have been hold horribly on. against multi-class. Hold on, hold oh. on, hold on, hold on. I got to officially on air. How often do we give Dan shit about how he pronounces things? Uh, at least, at least once, an once an episode. Right, okay. So, considering we've done wizards this entire episode. You wait till we get into these spells. <laughs> <laughs> but but considering that we've gotten into, into, into wizards now, I want to point out that I always feel shitty afterwards ripping on Dan about this. You should never make fun of anybody that doesn't know how to pronounce something because it means that they read it. Hmm. And you should never rip on someone for reading. Or on Reddit. You should definitely rip on people. Oh, yeah. Right, okay. Reddit but, is designed for you to rip on people. But, That's okay. what it's there for. But Dan has obviously got this wide vocabulary that he's picked up by reading books. And we should be penalizing him for that because people aren't reading enough in the first place. So while we're sitting here ripping on Dan consistently all the time, and I'm not going to apologize to you because fuck you, Dan. But That's fair. Yeah. I agree that we absolutely should not be... Penalizing you, for sure. Penalizing as well. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> is that a please, penalty or a penalty? Oh, please, shit, please that's don't, such a good argument. Please don't do anything penal to it, me. Please don't do anything penal It's also the penal system, though, when you're in a penitentiary. Ah, so it, I figure it can go both ways, much like Dan. So, anyways, Dan, I'm not really apologizing We've to you. We've all done it, Dan. No, no, we have not all done it, Terry. <laughs> but for anybody else that's out there that's, like, embarrassed about how they're pronouncing shit, especially in D&D, don't be... It is okay. It's yeah. Fine. I, I, I especially like when you're looking through like the list of how to pronounce the demon lord names. Um, and you'll get to like Yenogu and. Oh, Frizz Girl? Yeah, like, or uh, Gratz. So there's still oh, an man. argument about whether or not it's Jweeblex or Jubilex. And some of them yeah. are obvious. I mean, you've got. Uh, you've Orcus, got, you've right. got um, Azama Juice, and then there's. The, the, <coughs> Fuck, the other right ones. off. Oh my god. Uh, uh. <laughs> And Arcus, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, we rip on people all the time for it. And I do. I don't let things bother me as much as you two with things like words. Other things bother me out in the world. But really, you are really, the one that complains. You're the one that brings it up the most. <laughs> I'm such a dick. All the time. Yeah, that's right. Actually, you're it such a Richard. It just that, that's me. dick in British. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. British. I was going to bring up a little last thing, but no, this is good. No. <laughs> <sighs> Something about you playing a wizard? No, actually, nobody that cares, was, No, you had a... No, I actually legitimately had a thing. Well, sure. you could, we can do it. Because I, I was I was stunned and surprised this week when I learned... They're both when, D&D conditions. <laughs> when when <laughs> multi-classing full casters, yep. how the spell system works. And this is more prevalent with wizards than I think anything else. And I found it's really, really cool... Um, and needs to just be briefly discussed. If you are multiclassing, say you are a, as I am in my other game, a level four war wizard and a level two war cleric mm. together. My level four war wizard, who at level four only has second level uh, spells known, and my level two cleric, which only has uh, level one spells known, I have access to third level spell slots when you're multiclassing. So the way multiclassing and spells work in this game is your spells known are retained by class level. So what your level is in wizard, what your level is in druid, what your level is in whatever you're multiclassing, that is where your spells known are based off of. However, your spells per day, your spell slots are based off of the multiclassing chart, which is basically just conti- it's based off c- character level in either one of those things. So if you have um, your wizard uh, spells per day list for spell slots, you follow that all the way through, even if you're uh, like level two cleric or something mixed in there. You have that same amount of spell slots. You're not mixing your spell slots by the classes as per class level either. This seems a little broken. This is so, why so I long don't story. Multi-class. Long story, very short. TLDR. Uh, TLDR. If you're a fourth level wizard and a second level cleric, you still, at sixth level, only have four first level spell slots. You only have three second level spell slots and three third level spell slots. You don't know any third level spells, but you could cast your lower level spells as third with your third level slots. It blew my mind, and I'm... It, I, I, I agree with you, Adam. It feels a little broken. It makes that multi-class caster f- feel super powerful. Uh, Dan, I play champion fighters and rogues I'm because per- of this. Yeah. I play dungeon master so that I don't have to learn <laughs> this shit. And this, he does this spell. <laughs> yeah. This, ah, cool. Yeah. Mark it off on your spell slot. There, there we go. Next. Yeah. Hey, it was an absolutely brilliant little thing that I uh, well, discovered this week. That's good. There we go. I love it. I'm glad you. I'm glad you understand that. Sure, man. It's just way too much of the Celtic god of magic, whose name is Math. Man, man that's why. Honestly, that's a real thing. Maybe really, it's actually in the player's handbook. Cool. I'm sorry. What the Celtic god of, of of magic? Yeah, his name is Math. That seems very fucked up. That seems that actually seems really on point. Like that tracks. Yeah. yeah. You smell good. Thanks. Something smells good in your mouth. Drugs? Sure, I mean, I shouldn't just take drugs for whatever, but... They're Christian's friends, then. Oh. That's how it starts. First one's free, right? Yeah, the fisherman's friend gets in your mouth, and yeah. next thing you know, you're 175.26ing them. Which is 69, but a metric for... The thing about fisherman's friends is... 
Fisherman's friends. Nerd. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> Matt, Matt, Adam is the Celtic god of magic. It's true. Hence the red hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. You look like you could be the Celtic god of magic. Thank you. I'll take it. You know, I don't have much else going for me these days. <laughs> <laughs> That's our audio signature right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, here's my last one. All right, let's hear it. You tell me if I get this right or wrong. You know where we're going here, Adam, don't you? Yeah. Simulacrum. No. No. <sighs> I'll try again. Uh, simulacrum. Closer. It's closer. Simulacrum? It's simulacrum. Close. There it is. Simulacrum. Dan, can you kindly put that in so that I get it correct the first time? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 